Hey guys, we are in the basement and today, yesterday guys, on this episode of John's Arcade, guys, this is it, buckle up, it is our year end review, our annual tradition here on the channel, this is our 2017 review, we are going to go through every single game in the basement, talk about it in tremendous detail, then go upstairs, check out the games that are up there, then to the garage, <laughs> and we'll see what's going on out there, then we'll come back, we'll hang out, We'll kind of review, we'll reflect, because we did a lot in 2017. We really did. I mean, we went to the we went to the UK, and, and that video's coming soon. Uh, we went to Atlanta. We got to see the reveal of the Sky Skipper. That was exciting, huh? We went to Fun Spot. That, that video's coming soon. So we did a bunch of traveling, and we got a bunch of games. We really did. And actually, I figured out somehow how to get three more games down here. Right now, there's I just counted. There's 37 games down here. It's getting a little silly. <laughs> it's getting a little tight. And anyway, right now the arcade is turned off, okay? And we're and, and really this is how it is most of the time, okay? I typically turn it on about one or two times a week, and especially obviously when we do the videos, but most of the time it's like this. It's dark, okay? But not for long. We're going to turn the arcade on and we're going to just get to it. Let's just go through here, talk about everything in detail. And I have to say um I'm a little bummed because I have a few games down right now. I don't think I had any games down last year when I did the year in review. Well, right now I have a few games down. I've kind of lost control a little bit this year. Um, you can see that I, I had the Bally Senti Mini Golf right here and also the Mortal Kombat that we're working on. So I've kind of created this little bottleneck that I'm not too happy about. Um, I didn't have enough time over the break. I actually ended up just kind of chilling and hanging out to clean the other side there. So I think eventually these games are going to move over there. Anyway, enough of that. Let's let's turn the arcade on, okay? And and this, of course, and, and by the way, you know, the nature of this video, if you've seen last year's, there's always a lot of stuff that we're going to repeat. It's just kind of the nature of the video, okay? But there's also a lot of new stuff and maybe some stuff we haven't talked about before. But anyway, up here, okay, I have four 20 amp switches, okay? And these are each one of these is wired to a 28 amp breaker. We've got four 20 amp breakers. And so to turn the arcade on, I turn these on one at a time, real slow. And you can see I have this cool diamond plate thing and this danger high voltage. I kind of ripped someone off on Clove that kind of did the same thing. I showed this to my electrician and I said, I want it just like this. <laughs> and he did it. All right, so one's on, there's two. And these little covers here. These, it says here, suitable for wet location. These are just like covers for like a swimming pool. Like something that would be like in a swimming pool, like an indoor pool or something. Um, but it's suitable for wet locations. I think they look just really cool. All right, so the arcade is, is on. It's warming up here. Let's go down. And we'll just start going through every game one by one. And you can see we do have a couple games down right now. I'm kind of totally bummed about it, but we'll talk about those in a minute. Um... <laughs> All right, so where should we start? Um, I usually start, I guess we could start at the bottom of the stairs. Okay, so over here, the first game you see when you come down is Computer Spaceball. And that is a game that we picked up. We picked that up in 2017, didn't we? This is a new game. And I brought it down here. Uh, it's rather light. This is actually a, a really interesting game, okay? So this game was made by Nutting and Associates, okay? It's, it's all fiberglass, okay? This whole cabinet. Very cool, right? Um, this thing showed up on eBay. I bought it on eBay. I had it shipped here. Um, it's very, very rare, okay? And again, it's made by Nutting and Associates, okay? which is the company that also made the first vi uh, commercial video game of all time. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But anyway, this is a, basically a Pong clone. But what's interesting about this, I guess we will talk about computer space now. Uh, so, all right, we, we gotta kinda tell the whole story here with both of these games, I guess. So if we come over here, okay, let's look at computer space, okay? So computer space is the first commercial video game of all time, period, the end, okay? So Nolan Bushnell, started a company called Syzygy, okay? And he had this idea to kind of replicate uh, 
the space war game that was being played in colleges on like big mainframes, but he wanted to do it with TTL with very simple logic. It's not actually a computer in there. It's just transistor to transistor logic. And we did a whole video series on this. But anyway, at the end of the day, this is the very first commercial video game. Um, Nolan Bushnell uh, partnered with Nutting Associates to make this. This is also in fiberglass, okay? This game came out in 1971. It's actually a pretty sophisticated game, if you ask me for that, when it came out. But anyway, he had a falling out with Nutting and Associates, and then he left and renamed the company Atari, and they came out with Pong in 1972. Now, Computer Space wasn't really a big hit at all. It didn't put Nolan Bushnell or Syzygy on the map, but Pong absolutely did, okay? Now, Pong came out in November of 72, like a year or so, almost a year after this, okay? Now, Nutting and Associates, again, remember, they, they're buddy buddies with Nolan up until, like, uh, the, you know, uh, up until Pong comes out, I guess. But anyway, Computer Space Ball comes out like literally like a month or two after the first Atari Pong. So I believe that Nolan kind of licensed this to them as kind of a parting gift or something. Something I, I really believe that something went on between Nolan and Nutting why this game exists. Because there's just no way that they, they pivoted that fast and released this game like a month after Pong came out. You know, with the tooling for the, the fiberglass and the gameplay and the board is exact. I mean, it's the same schematic, like one-to-one. -one. When we fixed this thing, and by the way, when I picked, when I picked it up, it was not working. Um, it's still not perfect. There's a little bit of glitching there on the, on the TV, I think. Um, but Warren helped me, I think Adam helped me uh, get this thing going. The board ended up not really having a problem. It was a problem with the power supply. I put a new 5 volt power supply. And then I, we got the TV kind of just working on its own. I think at the end of the day it was just the power supply. But I do want to replace the tubes on the TV to see if we can kind of stop that glitching. Um, we can't actually play a game right now because I have to replace uh, the coin mech that's in here. It doesn't work. And the only way for me to coin it up is to pull the game off from the wall. But let me tell you, it's Pong. <laughs> it is a, a, a Pong clone and it's really rare. I mean, this is rarer than the Atari Pong. Um, I still do want an Atari Pong, but this thing is just super cool. When I saw it, I had to have it, especially because I have the computer space. And we'll talk more about computer space in a second, but really neat cabin. You can see like the kind of fiberglass fleck in here. Isn't that cool? And it's got like a little Nutting and Associates tag down there. The one thing that is annoying is that you can't get to the coin bucket without removing it from the wall and opening the back door. So I, I have no easy way to coin this up. So I got to get a new mech for that. And then we could just drop quarters in there. All right, let's move on. The next game here is another rare one. This is a Rockola Jump Bug. Um, Rockola uh, was a famous jukebox manufacturer in Chicago. And, uh, you know, in the 80s, uh, video games, arcade video games were a big deal. So they got in on the game. And they were basically licensing uh, games from Japan, okay, and bringing them to the U.S. and making cabinets. And you can see here, this, this game was actually developed by Hoey Corp, okay? And I actually adored this game. When we picked up this cabinet, um, it was in really bad shape. Like, horrible, horrible shape. I, I got this in New York. I think it showed up on Craigslist for like $50, but it was trashed and really trashed. Um, and I did a lot of work on this. Uh, we have white laminate on the sides. Reproduction artwork here. Re, uh, this is the original overlay on the control panel, which looks pretty good. We have the original bezel here. Uh, this is an original marquee that I, uh, Leslie Dean, I, I believe, sent me from the UK. Um, but this re restore really turned out nice. The coin door had a bunch of broken parts on it. I never replaced those. But I spray painted all this blue. That's some of the best spray paint ever. Um, and I was worried, I remember when I spray painted it, that that wasn't gonna look good, because it was glossy. Because I couldn't find uh, semi-gloss in this blue color, but it looks really great. And it's just a really quirky game, and I think a really handsome cabinet. And we can kind of coin it up here, and I'll give you a little flavor of it. Um, boy, that golf game's gonna drive me crazy. Do, 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 do. All right, so I gotta be careful here. There's a little credit board. Ugh. All right. There's no free play on this. You gotta coin it up. So it's almost kind of like a rhythm game. Ugh. <laughs> and it's multi-level. Every level's different. So this is like the driving level. Then there's like this cavern level. There's an underwater level. 
But you're basically trying to pick up these money bags and avoiding the bad guys or killing the bad guys. And I believe it's running on Galaxian hardware. There's a Joker dude. Ugh. So the clouds and the bad guys kind of look similar, so it's easy to die. Oh my god. Wow, I'm doing really bad. <laughs> that was horrible. Alright, let's, let's try it again. I want to at least get to the clouds. See that, how the star, star field is very much like Galaxian? at least try to get to the second area. I don't know why, but I just really, really like this game. <laughs> I don't know. I think the cabinet's cool. The game is weird and fun. I right, see that cloud right there? Oh, no, not that one. Later clouds. There's these little clouds that are coming up that give you really big points, and it's a great way to point press in the game. And once I discovered that, it really made the game, especially this level right here. Ugh. There they are. See 50? So you just you push down on the cloud, and look at my points. So every cloud has a different point value. So that one has a question mark. Ugh. This is a 50 point one. Come on, we gotta get the. We gotta, this one has 80 points. And the higher ones, that's 80. That one is, I think, 150. So that one we're getting mega points. So we gotta avoid the volcanoes and the jokers. Diamonds. I just, I just like this game. <laughs> I could be in the minority, I don't know. But it's a fun one to play for high score. I think we're, we're coming into the other area now, I believe. Yeah, so this is like the little cavern area. So now the game like totally changes. And then... The money bags turn into skulls, so you have to keep moving. So you can exit the level like... You can actually finish this level in one second, which I'm doing right now. <laughs> so that's the shortcut to end the level, but you miss a ton of points. So that's that's Jump Bug. This came out in 1981. Super cool and rare game. All right, moving on. Now here's a real clout crowd favorite. <laughs> Taito's Ice Cold Beer. And this is a really neat game, a very different game. Um, it's, it's not a video game, as you can see. It's a mechanical game. And how it works is... There's a rod right here, okay, and a ball goes onto the rod and using the joysticks left and right, okay, you're moving the rod up and you, you got to get the metal ball into the lit numbered hole, okay, and it basically goes from one to two to three to four to five, all the way to ten, and then when you get to the top, it then restarts, you go back to one, the game starts getting harder because the game will start messing with you, like advancing the bar on its own. It's a really neat game, it, you know. I got lucky. I picked this up from a collector friend probably seven, eight years ago on the cheap. It wasn't working when I got it. Um, it just needed new belts. Uh, there's like rubber band belts. There's like It's like a pulley system. And the rubber had rotted, which is very common on these. But if you find one of these cheap, you got to grab it. Because this is a very, very desirable game. And I got really lucky when I got it. So let's give it a go. So here it comes. Great music. There. And so, also, this game was meant to go into a bar. So when you get to 10, this little red star down here lights up. And you're supposed to show the bartender that and get like a free drink. That was kind of the idea. So that was two. And then the faster you do it, the more bonus you get. You can see down here there's a bonus clock that's counting down. So if I if I hurry up, I can get 300 points. And it starts counting down little by little. Now it's at 290. So we got a 290 point bonus. Just super cool, super killer game. And man, was I I was so addicted to this game when I first got it. Everyone was. Ugh. Ah. 
very neat game. And then the bottom coin door, I never was able to open this, and we've been talking about forever doing a video <laughs> where we try to get this open to see what's inside of here. Because I still don't know. There could be, who knows what's in there? There could be cash or, or documentation or, or something could be in there. Should we do like a Geraldo type video? <laughs> I know we've been joking about it forever. So anyway, that's Ice Cold Beer, super cool game. All right, moving on. Next to Ice Cold Beer is my Atari Firefox, and it, the game's down and has been down. Uh, it broke earlier this year, and I just never had the time to try to fix it. I suspect it's the power supply. Um, it has two AR2 Atari power supplies inside. I think one of them went bad. Um, I checked the five volts, but not the other voltages. So one day, hopefully this winter, I have some time and I pull it out and we just try to figure out what's wrong with it because it's a really cool game. Now, this is based on the movie Firefox, okay, which is a Clint Eastwood movie. What's special about this game is it is a laser disc video game, okay. Um, it originally had a Philips laser disc player in here, which was a very bad, bad, bad laser disc player. And when you find these games, that laser disc player is always broken, okay? And the problem with that laser disc player and this game is that this game wants that laser disc player only so to function because the, 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 the you know the computer logic is sending you know commands to the laser disc player and the only one it wants to talk to is that damn Philips one. So when I got this, the game was not working. The laser disc player was was broken. Um, I ended up sending the laser disc player to a guy uh, named Franz who's an older gentleman that used to work for Philips <laughs> repairing the laser disc players back in the day. Well, I sent him that laser disc player, I don't know, three, four years ago, <laughs> and he still has it. <laughs> but luckily, uh, Matt Ownsby uh, came out with a modern laser disc replacement board called Dexter, okay? So I picked up one of those and we brought the Firefox back to life, okay? Was working great, was playing great. I had it for about a year maybe. And then one day the screen just went white. So I don't know what's wrong with it. I do know that the sound went out first and then the game just stopped working altogether. So I'm really starting to think, I'm hoping that it was just the, one of the power supplies because the AR is also an audio regulator board. So I don't know, we'll, when we have some time, we'll pull it out and we'll see if we can fix this because I, I do kind of miss having it. Um, but it's a cool game. Uh, it, it's actually it has a video game overlay and then with real video behind it. And I don't think this was a very successful game, but it's a game that I like and I remember as a kid. And I remember playing this in the arcade quite a bit as a kid. And of course, I love Clint Eastwood and this movie. I remember going to see this movie with my dad uh, in a drive-in theater um, when I was a child. But it's a cool cabinet. It, it shares the same profile as iRobot with the, with the thicker base and with the, the head like that with the speaker grill. Um, almost like the original dedicated Major Havoc, but not quite. And then another thing that was kind of cool is they had a headphone jack down here with a volume knob. That's pretty innovative. I don't have any other games that have that feature. So I'm surprised that didn't catch on, honestly. I know that um, my friend Lorenzo actually uh, developed a, a system like this for pinball machines called like Pin Sound or something. Um, I think a Jersey Jack is putting those in their games with this headphone jack, but but this was the only video game I'm aware of. You guys tell me if I'm wrong, that had this little headphone jack here. It's certainly the only one I've ever had. And then the Yo Control is um, the same as like you see on Star Wars. So, cool game. All right, next to that is Golden T4 Complete. Um, this is a game I just had to have because uh, when I was dating my wife, uh, you know, in, in the 90s, uh, we played a lot of Golden Tea. It was our, I mean, we used to go to the bars a lot and we played Golden Tea and darts. And so I had to have both of those. I had the dart board, it's in the garage right now, but I had to get Golden Tea because we just love playing this game and have always played this game. And this one came out in 2006-ish, 2005. This is the, the Golden Tea 4 Complete Series meaning it has every single course from the four series, like 2005, four, three, two, etc. cetera. Um, it's, it's like 27 courses. Um, this is kind of an older machine now. I've always kind of wanted to get the Golden Tee live, but it's, it's a really great game. And it's got the topper on there. Um, the one thing I did do, which is kind of fun, is I put a switcher in here and you could switch over and you could play bowling, okay? So we've got... Uh, so you can go back and forth between bowling and Silver Strike. Hello and welcome to 
Welcome to Silver Strike Bowling. I'm Matt Hunt, and I'll announce you today's game is Randy Peterson, holder of 13 career titles. Randy, thanks, Matt. Glad to be here. So here on the bottom of this, there's a computer system, which is the Nighthawk, and then in the control panel is the Golden T board system. But it's a really fun setup. I mean, these are great games. Everyone can play these games too, especially the bowling game. So that's, and you could switch right back to the Golden Tee. So those two games are always kind of running in the background. And it's, it's called the Perfect Solution Kit or something. But I'll kind of show you down here what's going on inside. So you could see this right here is the Golden Tee PCB, okay? And this is the hard drive. It's got a 3D FX uh, uh, video card, which is funny. This is the power supply for Golden Tee. Right here is the Perfect Solution switching kit, okay? And then on the bottom of the cabinet that you can't see right now is the PC, the Nighthawk computer for, Sil uh, for Silver Strike. So it's a, it's a really useful setup and it does get a lot of play. I know it doesn't really fit with the classic arcade games, but it's still one that I really enjoy and it's one that I really did play on location. You know, in the 90s and the 2000s, these are the late 90s and the 2000s, this, this is what video games became, right? When you went to the bar, it would be a golden tea. I mean, like every bar had a golden tea. There was no more Pac-Mans and Miss Pac-Mans in bars. So I played a lot of this uh, you know, I never stopped playing arcade games, but this is what the arcade turned into to me when I went to a bar. It was golden tea and, and darts, so. And then over here is Pac-Man. This is the cabaret version. Uh, this is one that I fully restored. Um, when I got this thing, it was basically an empty shell of a cabinet. Um, a, my friend Walt in Massachusetts gave it to me. Um, it was just, there was nothing here. <laughs> like, like, literally nothing. It was just an empty cabinet. Uh, so we got some vinyl on from Hong Kong on eBay. This is some really cheap uh, wood grain. It held up pretty okay. I put it on, what, like four or five years ago? It doesn't look too bad. It, it was very inexpensive, like $20. Um, the control panel here, I painted this uh, really late in the year. And then over time, it just kind of wore from wrist wear and it always kind of bummed me out. But this is the original control panel. This is a reproduction overlay, but down here is the original silk screen uh, pack and ghosts that I kind of saved and spray painted around. But I think this turned out pretty okay. I, I you know, I, I wanted to get a Pac-Man and I already had the full size Miss Pac-Man, so I wanted to do the Pac-Man Cabaret. And of course you just have to have Pac-Man. Um, but we can start a game here. It does have, uh, I think the, Suzilla free play and high score save. I don't remember. But I never really got good at this game. I tried learning the patterns and I just I couldn't do it. <laughs> but but yeah, it's Pac-Man. You gotta have it. About as classic as you get, right? Alright, so let's continue on. All right, so over here is Computer Space. Now, this is a really special game, guys. Um, it, it's about as special as they come. This is the first commercial video game, okay? Did you hear what I said? This is the first, the first commercial video game. <laughs> this is the first video game. Not the first video game, per se, but it's the first one that made, that made money, okay? This is the one that started the video game business. Because prior to this, everything in arcades were electromechanical, like gun games, uh, electromechanical driving games. Uh, obviously, pinball was around. But there's nothing with a, a television set projecting an image. And, and so this was the very first one. And it, and it really started everything that we know today. And, and, and Nolan Bushnell was behind it who of course founded Atari and changed console gaming. I mean, so Nolan Bushnell, you know, I, I don't know what you think of the guy or, or <laughs> but, but he really, he really did a lot of great stuff and, and it all started right here. So this cabinet is the yellow one, which is considered rare. Um, it, uh, most of them are metal flake. And I happen to think the yellow one's the coolest. 
of course. But I, oh man, I just started Zookeeper. Um, but it's it's just a really special special game. This game was uh, sitting in a container down in Louisiana, okay. And I think it sat in that container for about 30 years. Um, and this gentleman, Wesley, put it up for sale. I got in touch with him. We made a deal. He shipped it up here. It, you know, condition unknown, working, who knows. And we got it up here, and it wasn't working at all. Um, so my friend Adam, who is an electrical engineer, or software engineer, he's an engineer. <laughs> my friend Adam helped me one winter get this thing working, okay? And it, it, we started with, with the, we got the TV working by swapping the tubes. Um, and also Warren, I, I have to also mention Warren. So Warren, who was another engineer, uh, so Warren and Adam came here, we worked together, we looked at schematics, we got the game working, it was, it was, it was really, really fun and magical, okay? And I did a whole series on this, obviously. And uh, the board had some issues, a, a few, I think there was like three or four chips that were bad, the power supply was bad, the TV was bad, and we fixed all of those things and the thing came right back to life, and it's been actually surprisingly reliable, knock on wood. And, and the television set back here has vacuum tubes in it, um, like literally vacuum tubes, like old guitar amps and stuff, and old radios. And so I replaced all those tubes and that actually fixed the TV. I think that's all I had to do with that. Um, so this game obviously doesn't have free play, but we could try it out here. Um, so it has fire thrust and thrust, okay, you know, fire missile and thrust, rotate left and rotate right and start game, okay? And a coin return. And this right here, we're looking at the first video game control panel. It is interesting how we got rotate left and right, you know, these, these are all controls that will be used in a asteroids later. Um, and, but on asteroids, they actually did it backwards, where rotate was with your left hand and fire was with your right. So when you play this game, it's, it's a little hard if your condition and used to the asteroids controls but it's a pretty neat game let's coin it up okay i haven't played this in a while hopefully it still works all right here we go so these ships are being controlled by ai and we're kind of dueling them in space you can you can steer the bullets but it's just amazing to me that, that this game even works. <laughs> oh, no, no. Ah! Oh! Like, the AI, that, there, again, there's no computer in this game. It's a time game, by the way. We have unlimited lives. So you can see we're dueling against them. It's two to four right now. I have two and they have four. Ugh. Darn it! Boy, somebody wanted me to, to to get the world record on this game. I really should do that. Don't you guys think? Should I do like a Twin Galaxies live stream? <laughs> and I can become the world champion computer space player? I think it'd be kind of fun. I, we're losing big time here. It's four to nine. So I think it counts to 90 seconds. Oh my god. No, I think it goes to 100. Ah. So we lost. <laughs> oh no, we no, we wait, we're in Oh, oh wait. We got we got an uh, overtime. Wait, was this scoring? I'm confused. We shouldn't have went into overtime, I don't think. So this is the hyperspace mode. Outscore the saucers for extended play in hyperspace. I don't think that we are winning there. Something wrong with this now? It says right now it's eight to six. We could have a bad chip in here now. Oh my god. So you see how the symbols, uh, the, the numbers start changing? That's actually normal. Alright, 
let's see what happens here. It should end. Huh. I'll look into that. Maybe... Hang on, I want to play another game. I want to see what happens. All right, I'm back. So they're winning four to one. I just want to see... Now it's four to two. I just want to see if this is functioning right. All right, it's four to two. They are winning. We should not go into hyperspace now. Okay, good. So maybe I was winning. I wasn't paying attention. All right, let's move on. So yeah, anyway, that's computer space. I, first game with a with a marquee too. Look at that, lit up marquee. Such a cool game. Um, okay, next game here is pretty awesome, very playable. It's called Zookeeper by Taito. Um, I love this game. I picked this game up. Oh, I don't know, three, four years ago, five. No, more like six. I don't know. I actually bought this game in pieces. Um, first, I got like the cabinet. And then someone was selling like the marquee and the control panel and a board set and I don't know. I got it for, I got parts and pieces from all different places and put it all together. Um, it wasn't working when I got it. The board had a lot of uh, graphical glitches and stuff and I replaced all of the RAM which brought the game back to life. Um, I didn't really do much cosmetically to this game. It's all original. Um, I didn't touch it and I don't think I'm ever going to because I don't really mind the condition and it's just got that 80s arcade patina and it's a survivor and I just don't want to touch it. The only thing I did was probably rebuild the joystick. I think I rebuilt the monitor. Um, I got the game working. I replaced the power supply. I burnt a, uh, a coin bypass uh, coin door chip. I don't remember. It was a lot of little tricky things. I had to do to get this game going, but it's just a great, great, great game. Um, controls, you know, it's a four-way joystick and a jump button. I think it's four-way. I'm pretty sure. So let's let's play the game. I love, 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 love this game. It is such a great game. Now, it looks like you're supposed to keep the animals inside the zoo. It's actually not the case at all. You want to actually let them all out so you can jump over them and get monster points. We have a countdown timer here, and it shows, like, one little prizes are going to show up, and that stuff's kind of insignificant. And, and in the beginning here, it, it, the game is very slow. And the objective of the game isn't super obvious until the later levels. So let's just kind of blast through these first few levels. Alright, so... Now we should have like a bonus level now. So this one here is obviously inspired by Donkey Kong. Um, you have to go up there, get the girl, jump on that, jump on it again, you get, wait, uh, there. Okay, so we got her for 5,000 points. All right, so now it's gonna get a little bit faster. So if I jump those guys, I get 1,000 points. And you want the animals all to go the same direction, and they always come out of the cage, and they go the opposite way uh, as where Zeke is, and yes, the character's name is Zeke. Clearly they are trying to create their own Mario, or Jumpman type character. A lot of uh, companies try, you know, having their own mascot, you know, their own Pac-Man, their own, their own Frogger. And this was Taito's attempt with Zeke. And Zeke was actually used in another game. Uh, remember Ice Cold Beer over there? Well, they had a version that was themed um, like this kind of uh, uh, bar uh, uh, German <laughs> uh, kind of yodeling Lederhosen theme. And it was called Zeke's Peak. And it had Zeke again in it. I don't think he was in any other games. So you can see, though, the more animals you jump, the more points you can get. And if you get really good at this, at grouping the animals together, you can get a million points per jump. So we've got 6,000 right there. So this, this is kind of... 
kind of like chaos. They're all going in multiple directions. But here, let's see, we get this right there. 6,000 points. 15,000 points. Oh, here's a good one. Ah. Ah. <laughs> But that's the game. Just a really, 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 really great game. Um, it does normally save scores, but there's a battery in here. It's a rechargeable battery. And if I don't keep the games out long enough, it loses the charge. Okay, the next game. One of my favorites. Top. This is top two game for me, guys. On your mark. Pole position. Absolutely adore this game. And by the way, you might notice these high score cards on all the games. Um, so the games that don't keep score, and even some that do, I put these high scores on here. So my friend Matt McCarthy and I, we, we play this quite a bit when he comes over. Matt, of course, is in my band, The Kill Screens. If you guys haven't figured it out, you know, the music I play on this channel, not this video necessarily, but the music I play on the channel are all done, all that music's done by me and, 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 and or me and my friend Matt uh, with our band, The Kill Screens. We have music on Spotify and iTunes and Google Play and everywhere else. Uh, we have an album that we released a few years ago. We have a second album coming out soon. But anyway, my friend Matt comes over quite a bit and we work on music and stuff down here. And this is the game that him and I play probably the most and it's probably the game I play the most besides Donkey Kong down here. I just freaking love pole position. I love everything about it. Now Matt's high score is 65, 310 down here. I think the world record is around 66 or 67,000. So, and my high score is like 64 something. I think it's my, I think my high score is 64, 700 and Matt's is 65, 310. So Matt's beating me right now. <laughs> um, but I just love this game uh, for so many reasons. It's just so playable. Um, it's, it's per it's driving perfection to me. I, it's it's my favorite driving game for sure. I like it way more than Outrun. Um, I just really enjoy that it ends. I love the fact that it ends. I love the fact that you have a finite amount of time to get a high score, and then that's it. It's kind of a get in and get out game, and it just does it for me. So um, we have a steering wheel. We have a low and a high and a, and a gas pedal. They also made a cockpit version. The cockpit has a gas and a brake, but you don't need the brake pedal in this game. It's just unnecessary. Um, uh, you just you just never need to put your, your foot on the brake. So let's let's give it a go here. So the first thing here is the qualifying lap. I just tried my little trick there. I'm not going to tell you guys what it is. <laughs> I learned it at Fun Spot this year. I'm um, talking to some guys. I'll let, you, I'll let you guys see if you can figure it out just from what's happening. I kind of blew it on this, on this starting lap there. Final lap, you're basically just getting the fastest time you can, and if you beat a certain time, you'll get the pole position and a bonus. And the pole position is, of course, your your position in the main race. And so that was 57.79. We got the pole position and a bonus of 4,000 points. All right, so now is the main event. It's uh, four laps. I'm in the pole position. And basically, if you want to finish the game, you can't crash. <laughs> and the thing about this game, too, is that every little thing you do slows you down, you know? If, if you're... Oh, God. If you touch the edge of the road, if you touch the puddles, all of that really adds up. If you go in the grass, if you, if you screech the tires, all of that stuff starts adding up and adding up, and oh my god, I'm not playing very well. So you notice the Dig Dug billboard? Um, the Japanese version has like Marlboro and, and stuff like that. So in America, it, it's advertising other Atari games, and this game was made by Namco in Japan and licensed to Atari. Um, this game uh, is, is, has a really bad reputation uh, as far as the hardware and reliability. Most of it, I believe, though, is, is, is edge connector related. Um, and I, I did some mods on this. Uh, when I got this game, it was not working. I actually have another pole position, too, that I have at the hangar, which is our, our bar arcade. I have pole position, too. Um, but anyway, when I got this game, 
No, actually, it was working. I got this from my friend Jay. I traded him a red Donkey Kong for this, um, and it was working. But I had some problems with the edge connector. That was a horrible game, by the way. <laughs> and I did, I did uh, some bulletproof mods on there. I did a video on that, but that was a really bad game. But I absolutely adore this game. It's just absolutely freaking. Uh, I love it. <laughs> Alright, next game uh, is definitely a favorite of mine, especially when I was younger. Track and Field, Konami's Track and Field. I remember playing this game quite a bit on the NES. Um, and it, it's just a classic, classic game. Developed in Japan by Konami. Um, this version was sold in the States by Century. Okay, This has the Century coin door right here with the Ray's logo. Really nice. Um, this game I, I bought from a friend who was getting out of the hobby. And he actually started the restore. I finished it. He actually painted and prepped this cabinet. He did a pretty good job on it. Um, and then I wired the whole thing up. Um, it did not come with the harness. I believe this was converted to a clax or something. And so I, I wired it with a JAMA harness and then used a JAMA to Konami adapter and then wired up all the buttons and everything. I never put the side art on and I, I really need to do that. We've been saying that for years. <laughs> but I've got the side art for this game. We just need to pull it out and put it on. Um, but really cool game. You can play up to four players. Um, let's let's give it a go here. And so the controls, by the way, are just these two buttons and jump and throw. And by the way, when I was a kid, there was guys that could take a comb and and do something with the comb to use it like to rock back and forth or something. And they were just destroying the game. And then Konami came out with these little button guards, so you couldn't do that anymore. And they also had another version that used a trackball. So. People were trying to game this game like big time because it's it's basically you play the game by hitting, hitting these buttons as fast as you can. Yes, so all right, let's let's give it a go. All right, and it's interesting you put your initials in before you start because there's a high score uh, leaderboard for every event. I'm gonna be really rusty at this. Oh my god, I haven't played this in so long. Alright, so I got... I needed 13 seconds to qualify, so I qualified. Alright. So this is the long jump. We got our speed meter down here. So you want to hold in the jump button to about 45 degrees. We need to get 7. I only did 33 degrees. That was pretty rotten. So we did not qualify. We get three tries here. And you just have all these Olympic events. You know, Olympics were a big deal like in 84. So this came out right before the Olympics. Um, and I remember playing lots of games like this, like uh, California games and winter games on my computer. Um, there was just a ton of Olympic themed games coming out around this time. And. I, they were actually some of my favorite games. The distance 6.55 All right. Javelin. We need to get 72 meters, and we did not. That's kind of too much. 54 degrees. Ow. The distance 65.12 meters. We did not qualify for the javelin. <laughs> Ow. All right, so the next event is the hurdles. On your mark. Get set. Oh my god. 
Oh my god, I didn't qualify! It's time. <laughs> Seven seconds. Game over. So you get the idea. There's like uh there's like a shot put type thing, a hammer throw, there's a high jump, which is really good. Um, it's a good game. It really is. I don't play it as much as I used to, but I really do like it. Um, next game here is Mario Brothers. This is the wide body. Okay, this is the dedicated Mario Brothers. Um, this is the first game to have a Luigi, or this guy with the green hat on. <laughs> I don't know, do they call him Luigi anywhere? Never really paid attention to that. I don't think they do. I don't... No, I don't think they do call him Luigi in this. I think that, so this game came out like after Donkey Kong Jr., right? So it goes Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong Jr., Mario Brothers, then Super Mario Brothers. So I think they called this Mario Brothers because they just needed two of those guys. <laughs> they needed two Marios, and so they made one with a green hat, and then eventually they said, you know what, we should probably call that guy something. Oh no, he, his name is Luigi, it's on there. Okay, never mind, never mind, I take that back. <laughs> So anyway, the first game to feature Luigi, which is the uh, basically a Mario. Uh, so he's Mario Mario, he's Luigi Mario, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, first game with Luigi, 1983, awesome, awesome freaking freaking game, okay? A lot of times you see these games in conversions, uh, well they'll take a Donkey Kong style cabinet, like over here, okay? And they'll remove the control panel and the, and the bezel and the marquee and the board. And they'll put a Mario Brothers kit in here with two joysticks. Well, that kind of stinks, though, because this is a narrow cabinet. And to have two guys next to each other, especially if they have arcade bodies, you know, it's a little uncomfortable. So you want to have the wide body. You got more space. Um, and it's just an awesome cabinet. I love everything about it, okay? And you'll notice, it, you know, if you see these on Craigslist too, um, one way to spot it is that that speaker grill is dead set in the center, okay? Whereas the Donkey Kong style cabinets are off center. See that, how it's to the left? So yeah, super great game. Uh, this one I bought on eBay long time ago. It's one of the few games I bought on eBay. I, I think I've only bought two games on eBay. I think it was this one and the computer space ball. I don't think I purchased any other games on eBay. And I didn't do too much to it. It was in pretty good shape, honestly. Um, the side art was trashed, so I put new side art on. This is the original orange finish. I'm 99% positive that, mm, I think this is the original control panel overlay. I can't remember. I don't think I replaced this. I, I Yeah, this is the original overlay. I did not replace this. So this is exactly how it was when Nintendo put it out. and. Uh, so everything's all original except for the side art, and then I just really just cleaned it up and just touched up the little dings and stuff, and it's a really, really great looking game. And it has two sets of controls, one for Mario, one for Luigi. It's just a two-way joystick, and then you have a jump button, and there's a 19-inch Sanyo 20 Easy monitor. Um, the monitor, um, uh, actually, when I got this game, I was very new in the hobby, and the monitor had jail bars, and, and Adam, from one circuit, cap this monitor for me to help me out because I was scared to do it. <laughs> so that monitor in there was capped by Adam. So anyway, let's give it a shot here. I'm gonna play as Mario. So when you play this game, if you're used to Super Mario Brothers, a lot of it doesn't make sense. You don't jump on top of the turtles. You actually have to hit them from underneath. Um, and knock them on their backs, like so. But I knew that because I played this game a lot on my Atari 800 XL. The version that was on the Atari 800 was pretty darn good. So he's going to that, that uh, pipe right there and he comes out the one above. Now you can see, you can pretty much see where Super Mario Brothers came from. Obviously it came from this game. And this established so much. The turtles, the pipes, um, I guess breaking bricks, because uh, you jump and hit that pow thing down there. Coins are in this game. I mean, there's so much in this game that ended up going into Super Mario Brothers and obviously the Mario universe. And you can see what happened too. They're probably like, well, let's just make it scroll. <laughs> let's just take this game and, and make it so you can go to the next screen. So this is a little bonus phase here. And if you play two players, obviously you both play at the same time. 
one person's Mario, one person's Luigi. And for a while there, my friend Matt and I, we wanted to get the world record. We thought we could we could go for it, because the, the, there's a world record for the uh, team. So Sidestepper. I guess crabs never really showed up in Mario, in Super Mario, did they? I don't think so. So the crabs, though, you gotta hit them twice. We can use that pow block right there. This game's so great. And if you bump, if you group them together like that, you get more points. You, you kick them off one, one, two. Well, you get the idea. This can go on for a while. <laughs> and then fireballs. I guess there's fireballs in Super Mario. Alright, so let's move on. Okay, the next game here is called Mad Planets. Okay, this is a Gottlieb game. And it's an awesome freaking game. I really, really, really like this game. Um, the cabinet profile uh, is the same as Cubert, okay? But the game's nothing like Cubert, okay? We have a flight stick right here, okay? And a spinner, very similar to what you find on Tempest. Um, this is a pretty rare game. I will tell you, though, uh, that my game right now has no sound. <laughs> um, and actually, I just sent the soundboard to a gentleman. Actually, Jay, my, my, my friend Jay was sending a bunch of boards to get repaired. And I said, hey man, can I throw uh, my soundboard in, in with that shipment and have that guy fix it for me? And so the soundboard is right now somewhere else and getting repaired. So we have no sound. Um, I tried fixing it myself by replacing the sound amp and it didn't, didn't do anything. So I don't know what's wrong with it. So anyway, I'll show you the, the game, but there's going to be no sound. So um, the planets, for some reason, are very mad at us, okay? And they're chasing our ship. I, I, I do believe that they are inspired by Star Wars. Um, they had this kind of Star Wars looking ship, you know, shooting the planets, you know, kind of like the Death Star blowing up planets. Well, the planets are mad because the Death Star blew it up. <laughs> so, I don't know. Anyway, let's start the game here. And basically we rotate our ship left and right and the planets are coming out. The music is so badass in this game. It's a real shame that we can't hear it right now. But, you know, Qbert, this hardware, always has trouble with the sound amps um, blowing up because of the voltage and stuff. It's, it's a pretty poorly designed setup. But without sound, it's rather lackluster. But the sound goes... And how, the, how this game works, by the way, is to get rid of the planets, you have to destroy all of their moons first, okay? And then once you do, then the planet is vulnerable and it turns red. It gets really mad when you destroy all its moons. And you get a bonus too if you if you, if you can get the plant if you can destroy all the plants before they fully spawn. But that's the game. I'll show you the bonus level here. All right, so here's the bonus level and you have to rescue these spacemen, but these comets come out and if you get the comet you get to keep playing the, the bonus level and keep... because Otherwise, if the comet runs off the level or kills you, then the bonus level is over. But if, if, you, if you can kill the comet, you can, you can keep collecting the uh, spacemen and getting the bonus. So, anyway, that's Mad Planets, and hopefully I'll have sound again someday. Uh, moving on here is the Atari Quantum. Super cool, super rare game. Um, this was one hell of a restore project. This is a... 100% restore, and I, I did a good job, darn it. <laughs> it looks good. So, Quantum, really rare game. I think they made about 500 of them, and who knows how many are left. When I got this game, actually, this game showed up on Craigslist, and it was a black cabinet with double dragon in it, okay? And uh, my friend Ian Kellogg shared that link, uh, just thought, you know, hey, look at this Craigslist ad. And I'm like, dude, that is a freaking quantum! <laughs> so Ian actually grabbed it for me from Craigslist for like $50 or something and then drove it up here. We did a video on it. 
But when I got it, I had nothing. Zero zilch. We had a black cabinet that used to be quantum with a with a JAMA harness in it, a, a raster monitor, and a double dragon board. No artwork, no vector monitor, no quantum board, no nothing. It was just a big black blank canvas, okay? And we really went to town on this thing. Uh, the artwork on here is reproduction, screen printed from the original uh, screens, okay, by Phoenix Arcade. It just looks freaking beautiful, like it was made yesterday. Um, I put laminate on the sides, so we have perfect side art installation. It looks as if it was done in the factory, okay. Um, reproduction overlay, reproduction kick plate. Now the PCB that's inside there is a re is a one to one reproduction PCB. Basically, um, it was a blank PCB. Okay, that this gentleman on Clove made, and he was selling the blanks. I bought one. My friend Jay bought one. My friend Jay works for a tech company. He brought the boards to work and, and had this woman populate them for us. We plugged it in and it just worked. Um, I got a reproduction harness. It's all repro art. Reproduction harness, reproduction board, but the cabinet is all original. So we did the best we could. Um, I would love to get an original board and, and pair it up with this original cabinet. But for now, we have the reproduction PCB. But really, again, it's one-to-one. -one. There's nothing different about it. It's just not old. <laughs> all right, so let me show you the game. And basically, the controls here are trackball the end, okay? It's a vector game. I have a 6100 monitor in here. Um, this game did ship with an Amplifone, but it was also designed to work with the 6100. Um, if you look at the manual, it talks about it. They just didn't make, they didn't just, they didn't get to that phase of manufacturing to get to the 6100 part of this, because I don't think this game was popular at all. It was a dud. But this is a 6100 that I rebuilt, and it looks really good. And I actually did some modifications to the game board so that it works with the 6100. And those are documented online somewhere. All right. All right, so we'll start with level one, okay? And you have to basically get rid of these planets, these nucleuses or whatever. And then, and then after you get rid of them, these little, those little beat, little uh, bits are, are left over. And you can actually grab those for like a bonus. And it's a pretty neat game. It's a rare game. I think this would be a great iOS app. You use your finger to do this. And so if we can group them together, we'll get better points if I get rid of two of them at once. Oops. It's pretty amazing though. They, they drew like solid colored objects with vector art. And, and by the way, vector, uh, this is a vector monitor, meaning it's drawing everything point, point to point, okay? with dots, or as a raster monitor, um, it draws horizontal lines across the tube. This is drawing everything point to point with coordinates. And so to get a solid color like that, the gun's basically just going like that. Ugh. And of course I never got good at this game. <laughs> All right, let's move on. And by the way, I had a cutaway there. I, I, I got a cold if you guys haven't figured this out, okay? <laughs> I had to blow my nose, I'm sorry. Um, right there, we are able to um, enter, input our initials using the trackball. It's a really cool feature. And you can actually put your signature on there you know, hand draw the signature, but it only stays on there for the day. Uh, like right there, you see Betty's the high score. That's the developer. Um, but when you put your initials in there, they will go away with your hand drawn initials. Uh, they don't, it doesn't save those. It only, it only saves the, uh, the, the actual uh, ABC, you know, A through Z letters. Okay, moving on. Next game here is another rare one, and unfortunately is down. Um, this is iRobot. Um, this is the same cabinet that Firefox has over there. I've had a lot of trouble with this game in the past year. Um, I was having trouble with the reset on the PCB. The game wouldn't boot. So I sent that out to Andrew Wellburn. He fixed it for me, so I have a working PCB in here. But now I got trouble with the power supply. Um, there's something wrong in the reset circuit in the power supply. So. Here we are. I, I don't have a working I robot right now. I need a new power supply. And the power supply that's in this game is super rare. I mean, it's 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 its own 
power supply. It's not, you can't just swap it out with a modern power supply. So I'm waiting for Andrew to fix the power supply and, and thankfully he's willing to look at it because he doesn't really work on that kind of stuff usually. But <clears throat> I hope to get that back soon and we'll be playing iRobot again. But right now iRobot's down, Firefox is down, and then Mad Planets has no sound. But Mad Planet should be fixed soon, iRobot should be fixed soon, then I have to investigate Firefox. But anyway, going back to iRobot, it's, it's a super cool game, guys. It's like the first 3D shaded video game, and it's a big deal. <laughs> and uh, when I got it, uh, and by the way, I got this game from John Exidy and also Mad Planets. I uh, bought both of those games from him in the last, like, whatever, eight, nine years. Um, Eight, eight years, seven years, whatever it's been. I, Mad Plants, I think I bought from him a long time ago. And this one I bought like maybe three years ago. I don't remember. Um, but anyway, when I got this game, um, this was trashed, okay? And this control panel is made out of plastic. Uh, or is it fiberglass? I don't remember. But these corners here were blown out. And then it was, was it Tronic? One of my viewers, I sent this to him and he repaired my, uh, he repaired it and he did such an amazing job. You can't even tell. He rebuilt these corners up and sprayed the whole thing black. So, so we did that. Um, the power supply when I first got it was dead. I rebuilt it, had the game working fine. And then it just started going downhill the last year here. But it's such a cool game, such a rare cabinet. Everything about it is, is badass, and I actually really like the gameplay. I do. It, it's a good game. And uh, you're making this little robot kind of going through this 3D maze, and there's this all-seeing eye, and and if he's watching, you can't jump, otherwise he'll shoot you down. It, it's hard to explain. I've got videos on it. Um, but as far as the restore on this, uh, like I, I made that instruction sticker that uh, I didn't have. Uh, I printed that out from a scan on the Internet and cleaned it up a little bit. Um, I, the cabinet, um, I did put some new vinyl on the sides here and t tightened up the black on the bottom because it was all chewed up. And what else? I didn't touch the, the, the side art. There's just no way this game's so rare. I'm not going to mess that up. And then the power supply. That was basically it. The game PCB worked when I got it. It was, it was the power supply that had the issue. And so once I got the power supply working, the game was fine. It was fine for a few years and then it just kind of went downhill. But super cool game, and hopefully we'll be playing that soon. All right, the next game here is Robotron 2084. Um, this game here I got from my friend Jay. I actually traded um, a couple games to him. Uh, I traded him a Star Wars, a... What else did I give him? A Multi-Williams. Was that it? Star Wars and a Multi-Williams? Oh, an R-Type for Robotron dedicated and 720. I think that's how that trade went down. Right? I gave him I gave him R-Type Star Wars and Multi Williams for the Robotron dedicated and the dedicated 720. I believe I believe that's how it went down. Anyway, I had a, I had the the Multi Williams cabinet um, which was a black painted bubbles cabinet with the J-Rock board in there. And I realized all I'm doing is playing Robotron on this thing. Like, I want Robotron. That's all I want. So I had to get a dedicated Robotron. I just think it's the best Williams game. And this is a really nice looking dedicated one. I haven't done anything to this at all. Actually, I, I, I swapped out the power supply. It's about all we've done to this game. I do have a new overlay. I never put it on, though, and I probably should, but... Yeah, we, should, we probably should put the new overlay on someday. I don't know. Because right now the dust washers are above and they're not supposed to be. Supposed to go on the bottom here. Anyway, um, really awesome game. It's a it's a twin stick shooter. Okay, the left stick moves, the right stick shoots. It's not the first game to do it, but it's the one that perfected it. It's designed by Eugene Jarvis, uh, who ra owns Raw Thrills now. You know, we've we've been to the Raw Thrills factory, and uh, uh, you know Eugene is a video game god. You know, he did Robotron. He worked on pinball machines. Um, I think he was the programmer on like uh, uh, Adam's Family. Uh, I, I mean, the guy's just done some of the most important games ever, you know, and, and is still doing it. Um, but this this game's just perfection here. Let's start a game. All right, so we're this dude here, and we gotta rescue the humans and kill the bad dudes. And. The levels and baddies are, are varied. Okay. 
Okay. And then, so like, the Hulk guys, those green dudes, we, we can't kill those. Now we got these stupid witches to chase. So there's a little circle here. Right there. You gotta get rid of those, because those things spawn those witches that chase you. Alright, let's go over here. Let's get the last human. So the green dudes you can't kill. And they will kill the humans if they get to them. Ugh. Alright. Come on. Alright, so the next level is where you get big points here. Because one, two, so you can see that. Oh, so the big brain guys, by the way, possess them and they'll attack you. But, see, I'm getting 5,000 for everyone. They, they go 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000. So you can get big points on this level if you can survive. Oh my god. <laughs> so, anyway, that's Robotron. Great game. And this is a pretty good looking game for all original. Alright, next game here is Donkey Kong Jr. Um, one of my favorite games of all time. You know, I, I'm a Nintendo guy, one million percent. Um, my favorite game of all time is Donkey Kong. And then, and then it goes pole position. And then after that, it probably does go like Junior or, or something like that, or Mario Brothers or Super Mario, I don't know. But Donkey Kong Jr. is definitely one of my favorite games. I love this sequel to Donkey Kong. Um, it's hard. It's challenging. I, I never really mastered it as much as I did um, Donkey Kong. I have a, a kitten here, by the way. Okay, so so this cabinet right here is all original. I bought, I bought this from, I don't know, some arcade reseller dude. And I didn't do a lot to it. I, I cleaned it up. Um, I patched some holes down here. Did an okay job. Um, tried to match the paint. Actually, someone in Clob gave me the paint. But I did an okay job. I didn't really know what I was doing. It's the first time I tried patching holes. Um, if I did that today, it would look a lot better. But it, it's presentable. Um, original orange finish on the side. Original artwork. Really, it was just the bottom there I had to fix because it was chewed up. Um, inside here, I actually have a, a, a switcher. Okay, so I have Donkey Kong Jr. right now. Okay, so if I were to come down here and press... I always forget this. One player and two player at the same time, then jump. It switches over to Donkey Kong 3, okay? So we got a Donkey Kong 3 board in here. I used to have a Donkey Kong 3 cabinet and got rid of it. It was just wasteful because Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong Jr. and Donkey Kong 3 all are the same cabinet, the same controls. Um, I mean, Donkey Kong 3 has a metal control panel, but it's the same joystick. So. There's just no reason to have all the same cabinet. So I got rid of Donkey Kong 3 to make room for other games. And so I put a Donkey Kong 3 board in here. And by the way, Donkey Kong 3, you play as Stanley. You're not Mario, okay? And you're a gardener. I don't know what's going on. I don't know why they got rid of Mario on this game. And, and basically, the game here is to get Donkey Kong to the top with your pesticide. <laughs> it's a weird, weird game. I don't know. I don't know what happened. Why did they get rid of Mario? Alright, so anyway, that's only Kong 3. So if I press one player, two player at the same time, then press jump, it switches over. Um, I have the Cambridge Arcade switcher in here. Um, which I don't think he actually really sold or released. I have like a prototype of it. Um, okay, so right now it says Donkey Kong Jr. Remix. So if I hold and jump... Okay, I hold and jump, it switches to original Donkey Kong Jr. So I have all, I have three games in here, all running on original hardware, right? Um, so here's Donkey Kong Jr., which is a game I love, and I, I, I'm trying to get to 100,000 points. You know, I've been playing this game <laughs> my whole life, and I've never gotten to 100,000 points, and it really bothers me. Get <laughs> 
Oh, that's right. I was wondering why the high score says what it says. Because I put the remix kit in here and removed the Bray's high score save. So all my old high scores are gone. They're on that Bray's kit that's no longer installed. So anyway, you are Donkey Kong Jr. trying to rescue Donkey Kong. And it's it's a cute game. It's It just gets so hard, and I, I've yet to understand the patterns. I know this game is pattern-based, but I've never been able to figure it out. So this is the chain level. the idea. So let me switch. I'm going to switch back to Remix. Oh, shoot. Okay, so right now we're in the Remix board. And Remix is a game that Jeff John, John Kowalski made. Did I just pick Classic? No. Okay. So this is Remix. And it's a bunch of new levels. It's pretty amazing. <laughs> he also did Donkey Kong Remix. So we have all these fan-made games now. But I, I've yet to really figure this out. It's pretty hard. But it's pretty amazing to have new levels in, in 2017 here. Oh, that's cool. You kicked the food. <laughs> I didn't know that. I, I guess I forgot about that. Ah! All right. All right, we passed the first level. So you get the idea. It's just a bunch of new levels, and it's really well done. Um, and it's a little kit, a little daughter board that goes on the main board. It's got some of the original ones mixed in with it. So you get the idea. That's Donkey Kong Jr. All right, let me just kill myself again. Die. All right, so let's move on. Next game is Donkey Kong. My favorite game. Uh, this is also the first game I ever bought. I did buy this on eBay, and I, I overpaid. I know I've told this story a million times. <laughs> Um, so, I, okay, so, understand, I've been a Nintendo guy since I've been a kid, right? Um, and Donkey Kong was my favorite game in the arcades, you know, I watched Silver Spoons and see Ricky Schroeder with games behind him, you know, I always loved and wanted arcade games, you know? And then I saw King of Kong, and I'm like, oh my god, I, I, I gotta get into this. I need to be part of this! <laughs> so I went on eBay, and I bought a Donkey Kong. And I had it shipped from Texas. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know what I was looking at. I didn't know what I was looking for. Uh, the person that sold it to me sounded reputable. Um, I, I paid for it. Um, it took weeks for him to ship it. Um, I was losing patience, but eventually it showed up. Uh, I picked it up. I brought it back to my house. I, I actually shipped it to Pilot Air. I opened the back door, and the monitor fell out. It was never bolted down. Yeah, I know. I've told the story a million times. <laughs> so, <laughs> so luckily, the seller worked with me. He turned out to be an okay guy. I don't. I didn't. I still don't feel great about the deal, because looking back on it, I know what he did. It's like he put this game on eBay, put a price on it, and said, "Okay, well, if someone buys it, then I'll go restore one and and ship it." That's what he did. Okay. So I basically bought it and had to wait for him to restore it because the pictures of the one that were on, on the listing were not the same as the ones that I got. And I said, to the, I said, I said to the guy, I said, listen, this game you sent me is not the one that was pictured in the eBay listing. He's like, oh yeah, no, no, that was just a, that was just to show uh, what we could do. You know, uh, that wasn't the same one. So it was a, 
irritating experience to say the least, but it threw me into this hobby like head first because I had to figure out how to fix this game because I bought a Donkey Kong on eBay. It didn't work. The monitor was destroyed and I, I, I basically started learning about what was what because of that situation. And, and it was probably for the best, honestly. Now, this is not a great Donkey Kong. It wasn't really a great restore. It's got a lot of orange peel. I really like the original finish better, but it's my first game. I'll never get rid of it. I've owned better Donkey Kongs than this that I've gotten rid of, but I will have this one forever because this is my first arcade game and it's the one I'm gonna keep. It's mine. This is my Donkey Kong. Um, and there's stuff that's not right about it, but it's my Donkey Kong. <laughs> so um, I do have a bunch of uh, boards in here that add other games. Just like in Donkey Kong Jr., you know, I've got the remix board. We also have the Donkey Kong remix in here. Um, I also have Donkey Kong 2, which was... A, so we got John Kowalski that made Donkey Kong Remix and Donkey Kong Jr. Remix, which are new levels for Donkey Kong made by a fan in the last year or two here. And then we also have Donkey Kong 2 that was made by Jeff Kowalski, Wislowski, or something like that. And Donkey Kong 2 is, again, some fan-made levels. that He did that like seven, eight years ago. Um, so, I, so on here, I've got two daughter boards stacked on top of each other. So we have the main PCB with the original game on it, and then I have the Donkey Kong 2 daughter board, and the Donkey Kong Remix daughter board into that. So I ended up with like five different versions of Donkey Kong on this thing. It's crazy. So I gotta show you. So like if I press right now, if I hold in one and two, so this is Donkey Kong. If I hold in one and two players, it switches now to Donkey Kong 2 uh, D2K, which is the one made by Jeff was Kowalski like seven years ago. And uh, okay, we're gonna have no sound now, right? <laughs> I have a problem with the uh, the connection at the uh, audio amp. I need a new. I need to order a new audio cable. Is the bottom line. So this is the new level here. So this is D2K, and it's actually really well done. I actually really played a lot of this and rather enjoyed it, to be honest. Okay, so then if I press in, if I hold in one and two players, it then goes back to Donkey Kong. So now, right now we're bouncing back and forth between the two games that are on the uh, D2K board. So we have original Donkey Kong, which is from my original hardware, and then D2K. Um, so this is original Donkey Kong. <sighs> I need to um, either get a new cable or hot glue the connector. I know exactly what the issue is. It's just a wire that's loose on the little Molex. I thought I'd fixed it. All right, so that's original Donkey Kong. Now if I hold in, uh, I gotta think about this. You hold in the jump button, I gotta be dead though. It's amazing that this even works. I can get D2K and Remix to work. I think I also have Derange too. All right, so now if I hold in the jump button, we'll switch to the Remix board. There you go. So now you're talking about Remix, which is another fan-made thing. It's actually really well done of these new levels. It's excellent, actually. It's hard, though. He's almost too clever for his own good. <laughs> like, this whole thing right here, where they, they come in the middle, is it, it's just a, it messes with your head. You got springs throwing balls up. I mean, the barrels up. <laughs> All right, so let's die, and then I'll show you the other games on this remix here. So I have it set to five lives, which I think is recommended for this, and also for D2K. All right, 
Alright, come on, die. Alright, so now if I hold in the jump button, we'll start bouncing between all the different versions on the remix board. So I think the other one should be... Deranged. Okay, so Donkey Kong Deranged, it looks like real Donkey Kong, but it's just harder. Okay, and if I press jump again, I think it should send us over to the D2K board. Yep, so then it goes back to that. So we've got four different versions of Donkey Kong. The five, right? No, four. Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong 2, Donkey Kong Remix, and Donkey Kong Deranged. Pretty cool, right? So those are my Donkey Kong cabinets. Okay, moving on here. Next game is Bally Midway's Two Tigers. Uh, this is a game I picked up uh, this year, right? I did. I picked it up in 2017. Uh, it's a pretty cool game. It's a it's an oddball game. Um, it popped up on Craigslist. It was actually in a school. Uh, I guess it's been in this school for the last 20, 30 years, and. Uh, it's a it's a neat game, and this is a conversion version. Uh, they actually had this game in two different uh, flavors. There was the uh, the dedicated version, okay, and the dedicated version that Bally Midway released had two steering uh, st flight stick steering wheels. They're actually made of Tron joysticks, okay, one two, okay, and totally different looking cabinet. Also had an eight track player. Um, very cool. The original one is very cool. This is the conversion one. It was a kit that they sold to convert Trons into this game. So if you look here, this used to be a Tron arcade game, okay? But it's a legit conversion kit. Valley Midway sold it to convert their own Tron games into Two Tigers. It has the full artwork here. I actually like it, and I've heard other people say they like, they like this version better because the game they think is more fun to play with the spinners. I don't know. I don't have a lot of experience with the with the flight yoke one, but it's a cool game. It's totally different. It's uh, do I have to coin up? I forgot. Uh, doesn't have free play. I think it does, but I need to put a battery in it. It's got cool sounds too, by the way. This is MCR. So we need to put three holes in the ship to sink it. But here, listen to those sounds. So I'm, I'm this ship right here. And so we can drop bombs or planes onto the ship. So if we shoot the planes down, they go right into the... And so that, that little crosshair is shooting me. Now, if we had the dedicated one, it would be playing an 8-track cassette player tape of, like, war sounds. Uh, so you can see we're injuring this thing. Oh my god. So my, pair, my guy's parachuting down there. So it's about to leave. So we got one hole there. So we blew it. So we got this sub. We gotta get rid of it. That's kind of like a little bonus level. You can see the Tron burning. I think. Yeah. Ah. Oh, we got to sink a ship. There, we got two now. All right, we blew it up. Yay! <laughs> Come on. So here comes another ship. You guys get the idea. This is a timed game, by the way. You have unlimited lives. You have unlimited lives, but if you don't clear a certain number of ships in a certain amount of time, the game's over. Need one more 
more coal here. Come on. All right, blew up that ship. <laughs> so, anyway, you get the idea. So, combat two, you need four holes. You can like get these subs. There we go. All right, let's let's move on. So that's Bally Midway two tires. Cool game. What do you guys think of that one? I can see myself maybe getting rid of that one. <laughs> I'm not sure. I, I like it though, but I, I the writing's on the wall. Cause I, I've been looking around lately, like you know, I mean I'm at the point now where I can't add any more games down here, like at all, at all. Like that's it. So if I want to add more games down here, I'm gonna have to start getting rid of stuff, and it's getting so hard to choose what to get rid of. So that might be the first. We'll see though. But I, the thing is, I like it though. I'm not saying it's a bad game. But it might be one of my lesser favorite ones down here, but it's cool. All right, next one here is Dragon's Lair. Oh my god, what can we say about Dragon's Lair? This is the game of games. I mean, this is a laser disc game. This is an elite game. When I was a kid, this game blew my freaking guard darn mind. <laughs> I remember going to 7-Eleven, they had Dragon's Lair there. I, it was a 50 cent game, which first of all was like impossible for me to consider because I didn't have 50 cents, let alone a quarter. But I would watch the older kids play this game and they were just so, like the ones that knew how to do it, they were like gods to me. So I just, I really did like this game. I did play it. I was never good at it. I'm still not good at it. But I just respect it and I love it so much. It's so freaking cool. It's so well executed. The Don Bluth hand-drawn artwork is just amazing. I think the cabinet's cool. I think the sounds are cool. It's just awesome. So this one is all original. Um, I didn't do a lot to it. I put side art on it because the side art was missing. I replaced the control panel overlay because the one that was on here was absolutely hosed. Um, uh, it was working when I got it, but I got rid of the original laser disc player. It had a, L it had a Pioneer LDV-1000 which is considered uh, a not so reliable laser disc player, but it was working. So I decided to get rid of it and replace it with a newer model, the LDV 8000, which was a, a really high end commercial laser disc player uh, for its time. So I found one of those on eBay. I pulled the LDV 1000 out, put in the LDV 8000, which was significantly newer and, and just beefier. And so that's what it's running now. This is running an original laser disc and with a, a Pioneer laser disc player. Um, it's just not the, uh, the original player. I have it on a shelf over there. Um, I did install the Merlin board in there, which, which allowed me to use that LDV 8000. And then the Merlin allows you to do some other stuff like swap discs. Like I could put Space Ace in here. Um, I have a Space Ace disc, so I can play Space Ace or Dragon's Lair. Um, you can, and now you can even like mod it even further and get the Dragon's Lair 2 disc to work in here and stuff like that. I don't know, but um, I'm actually mostly interested in only playing Dragon's Lair. It's funny too because as time has gone on here with me collecting and, and people release things that allow you to do stuff, you know, like 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 over here, like Donkey Kong Remix and Donkey Kong Junior Remix. You know, Qbert does a board. You, you can you can get all the different versions of Qbert. You know, I've I've had a lot of these kits, you know, that allow you to put more games into a cabinet, and I always find that I only want to play the original game. <laughs> like it's it's like you know what I bought Donkey Kong Jr. because I love Donkey Kong Jr. Yeah, it's fun to try remix. I think it's really well done. But at the end of the day, it's all about Donkey Kong Jr. for me. Same thing with Dragon's Lair. You know, I I have the Space Ace disc. I put it in there. I tried it a few times. But at the end of the day, I want to play Dragon's Lair. That's where that's where it is for me. So I I just think this is the classic one. This is the best one. It's awesome. So let's give it a shot here. And, and by the way, so the controls here, eight-way joystick and a sword button, and then we have some uh, LED uh, scoreboards up there. So they kind of mixed the, they didn't put the score on the screen here, it keeps score up there. On Dragon's Lair 2 though, they had a little overlay here that had score. Alright, let's, let's give it a shot here. I'm still not good at this game, by the way. All right, I hate this one. <laughs> a lot of people diss this game too because it's it's like a it's a movie that we move the joystick and then die. But I think it's a video game, 100. percent I feel like I'm dictating what's happening here.
So this one here, you gotta go where the, it's, it's pretty obvious what you do, right? So I'm pressing right, and it goes right to that lane. I don't know, I just think this is, this game is so well executed. That pressing the right to avoid the whirlpool, pressing to the left. And then we gotta go left. Oh my god, I pressed, I was supposed to go right. <laughs> Duh. I forgot the pattern. You have to press forward at some point. You're going down, 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 and then forward. So yeah, Dragon's Lair, awesome, awesome game. All right, so let's go over here. Uh, we have a couple pinballs. I used to have more pinball down here. Right now I have two. Um, I have two other pinball machines, Ghostbusters and NBA Fast Break. Those are actually on location right now. Um, that used to be in the basement. But down here right now, I have Revenge from Mars and Radical that we picked up uh, this year. So Revenge from Mars, um, it was a pretty amazing machine. It's kind of a hybrid. Well, I mean, it's not a hybrid. It's a, it's a pinball machine. But they did something really unique. And actually, if you don't know the story of this game, you should go watch Tilt, The Battle to Save Pinball. It's a DVD. It's amazing. It's a great documentary. It's all about this machine. And, and the long story short is that basically in 1999 or 80. 98, whatever it was, uh, Bally Williams said to the developers, hey, the, the designers, they said, hey guys, pinball's going nowhere. You guys aren't innovating. If you don't do something new and unique with pinball, we're going to shut down the pinball division. And so these guys went to work, George George Gomez and, uh, and, uh, and Pat Lawler, and they came up with this idea to project an image onto the play field. Up here, there's a monitor, okay, a CRT, and the play field glass has a half silvered mirror in the back, okay? And so the image is being projected onto the play field, and it look, kind of looks like a hologram that you're, you're fighting with uh, with the ball, and it's a really great effect. And this game actually sold pretty well, but they still closed the pinball division. <laughs> so so and this is a Pinball 2000, that's what they call the... Um, I guess the series of games. There was this one, and then also Star Wars Episode One, which was the last pinball machine then that Bally Williams made. Um, but this is definitely the better of the two pinball 2000s. I don't think Episode One is very good. Um, and George Gomez did design this, who's like my, I think he is my favorite pinball guy. I, I used to always say Pat Lawler. I kind of think I like George Gomez. I, I, there's, George is just cool. And we got to meet him and hang out with him at the Stern Pinball Factory. But, you know, he did NBA Fast Break, which I love, and he did this game. Um, I used to have a Pat Lawler uh, win, whirlwind, which I do love. All right, I, I like both of them. <laughs> anyway, uh, let, let's check this out here. So let's start the game. Okay, this is kind of a tough one to film here. So we're gonna have targets that are kind of like floating on the play field. It's just a really cool effect. Uh, there's a ramp there. I didn't hit it hard enough. So you're shooting up the ramp and you're hitting these kind of virtual targets. It's, it's just a really cool effect. Ugh. This is probably the least interesting mode I chose. <laughs> You can skip the uh, cutscenes. All right, so we have to hit the do the last one here. 
I might LED this thing. Cause I did the radical and we'll talk about that in a second. Boy, I stink. <laughs> But I, I really do think this is a fun game. <laughs> Alright, there you go. So that's that mode. That's kind of a weak mode I chose. Let's do, uh... I guess we're not picking. This is a good one. So this one here, we gotta hit that catapult, and it launches the thing at the UFO. And then the marshes come down, and they, they parachute into the lanes. Anyway, you get the idea. It's a fun game. It's the sequel to Attack from Mars, um, and I love it. It's one of my favorite pinball games. I'll never get rid of it. Um, a lot of the pinball snobby guys I don't think like this because of the video portion, but I think it really adds a lot to it. And I, I think the cabinet looks kind of cool, the artwork is cool. Um, you can see it's obviously different than a traditional pinball machine. It's got this big head up here, but there's a PC behind here, a computer. And I'm trying to think, I, actually I bought this game from a, a pinball flipper guy that is around here. And I didn't do too much to this thing. It's, it's been working pretty reliably. Uh, the power supply did go dead at one point. I think I replaced the power supply. And then I also did a video amplifier mod. I did a, I, a video on that that made the picture brighter. I'm trying to remember what I did. There's some video amplifier, like an Ultramark thing. I don't know. I did a video on it a long time ago. I've had this thing for a while. Uh, very cool game, though. All right, the next game here is called Radical, okay? I don't know if you guys have noticed down here, but uh, I'm into skateboarding and have been since I've been a kid. And I still skateboard in the summer, obviously not as, as uh, limber as I used to be, but, you know, I do a lot of longboarding. I, it's my favorite, like, activity, you know? I, I, instead of riding a bicycle or a mountain bike, I'd rather be on a longboard. And I just love skateboarding. And I've always wanted this pinball machine. And because it's a pin, it's a it's an '80s uh, skateboarding themed pinball machine. My God, it screams me. <laughs> so, so I've I've been looking for these for a couple years. Um, and then my friend Daniel down in Georgia uh, finds one. Okay, and it was it, it was uh, the story is this. I, I guess his friend was an air conditioning guy, and he went to someone's house and saw the pinball machine down there. And started talking to the guy, and the guy's like, yeah, we've had it forever, no one plays it anymore, get it out of here, kind of a thing. So Daniel s told me this story, showed me photos, and I'm like, oh my god, dude, you gotta get that for me. So Daniel uh, picked it up for me, he shipped it up here from Georgia, um, turned out the game, we think, is home use only. Uh, the guy that owned it was rather wealthy and maintained it pretty pretty awesomely. Um, the, the game is just clean and pristine. I mean, if you look up here in the top, that Bally logo still has the plastic on it. <laughs> that still has the plastic over the logo, okay? The play field is immaculate. Now, I did modify it, I put LEDs in it, and my God, it pops. It, it's the best thing I ever did. This game just looks sick with LEDs. And if you look at, you know, if you compare the Radical to the, to the Revenge from Mars, the Revenge from Mars looks so dark and dirty next to it. This looks like a modern pinball machine, and really, Putting these LEDs in here, it just, it took this game to a whole new place, but it's its a really cool just skateboarding theme, skateboard theme thing, pin, you know, the whole game's like a skate park. There's a gazillion ramps, you know, we've got one here, um, well, there's one here, uh, one here, one here, uh, it has four flippers, one, two, three, four, three drop targets, there's a snake run in the back there, um, everything about it is just screams the 80s, the colors, it's, I don't know, the music, here, I'll, we'll play. Whoa, that's like totally rad. Listen to that, well, that's like totally rad. <laughs> I'll try to show this the best I can here. The guitar. Game. This game just plays phenomenal, by the way. I think that's Steve Ritchie, that voice. 
So the snake run is all the way in the back there. I got it. I hit it. But just mega cool game. So we went up that ramp there with diverters. We just locked the ball. Oh no, we didn't. So right now we're trying to spell radical, okay? And then if we do, then we can lock the ball for multi-ball. Awesome. So that's a little toilet bowl that went down. I don't know how good the camera is filming this. But yeah, that's it. You get the idea. Super cool game though. Um, just power cycle. Be sure to check out my video on this. I did a whole video about the LED, the re you know, and all that stuff. But I didn't really have to do any kind of restore anything to this. It was in such immaculate shape. It's, it's just a sick game, isn't it? <laughs> I love it. All right, the next game here is called Atari's Cloak and Dagger. And this is another game I picked up this year. I guess I did get a lot of games this year, right? I got two Tigers, Cloak and Dagger, Crazy Climber, the mini golf game. Well, you know, we removed a bunch of games, though, because uh, we did uh, John and Jay's Arcade, so I had a lot of holes to fill. And I filled them and then some. So anyway, this right here is a conversion kit that Atari sold back in the day to convert Williams games into Atari's game, Cloak and Dagger. Now, this was based on the movie starring Dabney Coleman. Actually, originally the game was gonna be called Agent X. And then I guess they got the Cloak and Dagger license and they just kind of pivoted because the theme was the same and changed it to Cloak and Dagger. Um, they did make a dedicated cabinet for this, but they're really prototypes. They were in like these Crystal Castle style cabinets. And so when you see this game out in the wild, it's always in a Williams cabinet or, or Pac-Man or similar, but really it was designed for Williams cabinet. Um, this used to be a Defender cabinet. And uh, I think it actually is the one to get personally. Uh, this has the original artwork that was installed back in the 80s by an operator on the sides, and it looks really good. Um, mine did not have the kick plate artwork when I got it, so Rich from This Old Game sold me this reproduction piece that was made from the original film. Original control panel overlay that you never see. These are always like just blown out or faded completely. And you can see on the sides, maybe you can see some of the original side art there. So it's a really great, great, great conversion uh, specimen, especially because it has all the original stuff that was installed back in the day. Um, let's kind of give the game. It's, it, and by the way, this is also another twin stick shooter right there. It's a really neat game, by the way. I mean, it's, it's surprisingly deep. So we are this dude. Our mission is to recover the stolen plans from the evil Dr. Boom and destroy his underground bomb factory. So we have this elevator here. These graphics, by the way, <laughs> back in the day, it's like, wow. All right, it says, get the secret box S, okay? So we gotta get the secret box, okay? And then get out. That's like a piece of a map. And then we throw a bomb in the middle, and then we get out of here. So that's the first level, okay? So we got the secret box, which has the first piece of the map that we're gonna use on the fourth level. We have to get the three pieces of the maps in three levels. And then you get bonus points for blowing up these things too. Or, or picking up the green bomb, that's what it is, right? So we throw the bomb in here, and then we get out, we get a little bit of a fuse bonus. Right there. All right, so we have two pieces of the map. So now we get the third piece. Which is right here. Let's just blow this place up. Ugh, the forklift hit me. So let's blow the place up and get out of here. Come on. All right, so now we've got three pieces of the map. So now the next level, there's landmines everywhere. But because we have the three pieces of the map, we know where to go by these arrows. See that? And then they'll show you the location of the landmines. So they'll just flash them every now and then. Like right there. So, but, so there you go. So that's pretty much the game. Rinse and repeat. It, it's really interesting. I, I think it's, there's a lot of depth to the game. I think the theme is cool. The sounds are cool. The controls work great. And like this level here, you have to start digging through the walls. So they start modifying the, the idea. It's a cool game. 
So, all right, let's move on. The next game here is Frogger. I mean, what can you say about Frogger, guys? <laughs> That's a classic game. That is an iconic game right there, Frogger. So this Frogger, uh, I restored fully. Actually, I, I it was a weird time in my life. I ended up with like four Frogger cabinets. I don't remember why. <laughs> so, and I took parts from all four and made the best one I could. And then the rest I sold or gave to friends. And uh, so this Frogger here was made up of the best parts from four different Froggers. Um, it's mostly original, but the, the cabinet itself is, is definitely awesome, in awesome shape. The original wood grain and all that. Um, reproduction overlay, reproduction bezel, original marquee. Um, I painted all the black, restored the coin door. It's a really good looking game. It's a very, very nice Frogger. And I put on the side art right here, um, which was an operator option back in the day. I guess they did not ship Frogger with side art. Uh, but they included like a little card or something that said, if you want side art, fill this out and we'll ship it to you. Um, so this one did not have the side art when I got it. I ordered the reproduction and I, I really like it with the side art. But anyway, let's play a game. You know, it's Frogger. <laughs> and this has a new grommet in, in here. And it's nice and stiff. And it plays really great. I actually really like this game. I don't play it as much as I used to. But I remember really playing this a lot when I first got it. Because when you get into these games and you play for high score, especially with a friend, like my friend Matt, it, it kind of gets a little addictive and competitive. But I remember him and I sitting down here with a beer on a stool, <laughs> trying to beat each other in this game. And when you really try to play for high score, it becomes a different thing. Like right now, I don't really care what my score is. So I'm just kind of going through the motions, but when you're really trying to get that score, it just takes it to a different place. So, anyway, that's Frogger. You get it. Let me kill the people off. I have it set to five frogs, which is like the Twin Galaxy setting. Okay, next game over here is a pretty special game. Um, it is my favorite vector game. Uh, this is a, uh, Atari Major Havoc. Now this is the conversion version, okay? So a, you know, just like a cloak and dagger over here, okay? This was a kit designed to go into another game. Atari also sold a, a kit for Major Havoc designed to go into Tempest and Space Duels and uh, Gravitars and other games that use the 6100 monitor, okay? So this is a factory kit that was sold to operators to convert Atari's Major Havoc to uh, from a Tempest, okay? So this has the original uh, side art installed from that 80s kit, okay, installed by an operator back in the day. So it's got the full uh, side art. That's not reproduction. This is all original from the kit, okay? It's got the original marquee from the kit from back in the 80s. This is not a reproduction. Um, this overlay on the CPO is a reproduction, though, because I bought a reproduction control panel and added the spinner knob, okay? Now... The conversion version of Atari's Major Havoc for the Tempest cabinet used the uh, Tempest spinner, okay? Well, I, I I didn't like that as much as the roller because the dedicated version, and by the way, the dedicated Major Havoc cabinet looks very reminiscent uh, to the iRobot and the Firefox cabinets, but it's they're not the same, but it's similar. Um, but anyway, the Dedicateds had a roller to move Major Havoc left and right. And by the way, this game was designed by Owen Rubin, and I actually had him on the John Show not, not that long ago, and, and the John Show is a little tiny podcast that lives on the Video Game Outsiders app, if you guys go to iTunes or Google Play. But anyway, Owen did a lot of really great games, but I think this is by far his best game. I also think this is the best vector game that's ever been made, period, at the end. You know, I've had Tempest. I don't like it as much. Um, I've had Star Wars. I think this is better. You know, I've had all the other Atari ones like Gravatar and Black Widow. I, for my money, Major Havoc is the best vector game. I just think it has the most depth. It's cool. It's neat. It's it's a platformer. I really like the control scheme. You know, I think the roller moving this left and right is awesome. And, and let's just kind of get into it. I do think if you get this game, you got to get the roller. And I put a little LED in here so it lights up green. So let's, let's kind of give it a shot here. So I just think it's so cool that they made a, a platformer using vector graphics. There's a little breakout game here, and 
you can use this to enter warp codes. Or you can play... You can just play the game. See right here that those numbers are changing? I can put in a warp code there, or if I keep playing the breakout game and... and, and, and you'll continue the game in between levels. Anyway, alright, the first level here is kind of like, uh... Is inspired by, like, uh, Galaga or whatever. Oh my god, did I select a higher level? I must have. I must have put in a big warp code. I think I, I put in a warp code and I didn't even... on, on accident. Alright, so now we're gonna land on the planet here. I'm on a higher level, guys. No, I'm not. What is going on here? Yeah, I am. I don't I don't know what level this is. <laughs> I put in a warp code. I was just screwing around. I, I didn't even know what warp code I put in there. I just put in two random numbers that turned out to be warp codes. Yeah, this is a much higher level. <laughs> I just got the high score! <laughs> what the heck? So... <laughs> Weird. I... Okay, I don't know what I did. So, it, on these Atari games, you know, if you start on higher levels, you get bonuses. So, because I started on that higher level, I got a bonus. A massive bonus, which just gave me the high score in the game. So let, let's start on the on the easy level. <laughs> That's so weird. So like down here it says enter red warp code. See that? I just put in like two random numbers. All right. So this is how it's supposed to be. This is the first level. <laughs> It's a lot more doable. Alright. So now we're gonna land on that. I just think this is so cool. Alright, so we got oxygen. So basically we have to touch the reactor core and then get out before it blows up. So I can get these little oxygen for bonus points. It's 1,200 points. Alright, so that passes that level. Such a cool game. variety in here though it's not always the same thing it's just kind of like the same idea they just add to it or different formations um and then they're gonna do the maze level after this let's just do this level and i'll show you guys the maze level and if you leave him alone he'll start like getting impatient, like that, tapping his foot. Isn't that funny? I know, like, in Mario 64, when that happened, it blew my mind. Ah, oh, I, sh I should use my shield there. So your guy does have a shield.
Alright, so this is like the maze level. I just like how the everything twinkles. It's just a really neat effect. Ah, I blew it. So you can see the levels start getting more complicated. There's a warp right there. <clears throat> All right, so this dude right here. It's a cool game. Trust me. It's a good one. <laughs> and we blew it up. All right, let's talk about the next game. Next game is Paperboy. Um, let's see. Paperboy is a favorite of mine. I used to play it a lot as a kid. I know I've told the campground story <laughs> before. All right, I'll tell it again real quick. I, my memory of Paperboy is pretty, pretty uh, distinct. Uh, my parents and I and my sister used to go camping a lot, like almost every weekend, right? We were, in, we were in campgrounds. And I really remember playing arcade games in campgrounds. And there was uh, one campground we went to in Galena, Illinois, and, and in, their, uh, in their little store they had video games, and they had Paperboy in there. And so um, my dad stopped at the store, uh, at the campground store to drop my sister and I off in our station wagon I jumped into and we were gonna go in and play paperboy I jumped out on one side she jumped out on the other my dad thought she was out of the car he started driving away and he drove over her foot <laughs> so, so that's my story she was fine um, but I, I just love this game it's so cool with the handlebars you know this is the kind of game though you know you can't do this kind of stuff in MAME easily you know there's no handlebar controller you can go buy on uh, on Amazon right now okay so it's just a really unique game you got to have the dedicated one to really experience it properly you know same thing with Major Havoc you know the best games are the ones that have the most unique controls but let's see if we can kind of get in here and I can we can play this um, it's kind of tight but yeah, we should be able to. So anyway, we have, a, we have a handlebar controller. We have a throw button on the side here. It's got real kind of mushroom grips and stuff. Actually, those aren't mushroom, but let's start the game. Uh, my paper boy actually has an issue, and I never got around to fixing it. I only have sound on the left speaker. The right channel is missing, and it's something with the AR power supply. I'm pretty sure of that. I am fine. My handlebars need to be calibrated. And basically you want to deliver papers to your customers, and if you get it in the mailbox you get a bonus. And then you want to wreak havoc and destroy the windows of your non-customers. My handlebars are all out of whack. There's a calibration setting in here, and I usually calibrate it before I really play a game. Or it'll it'll start correcting itself if I, the longer I play it. It's an awesome game. Atari just did the best stuff back in the day. Man, my handlebars are way out of whack. 
Radar. So this is the bonus level here. Oh my god. So you go through the whole week here. So this is Monday. And then there's an end game to this. So if it's one of those games that kind of has a finite amount of time to get a high score. So I think a lot of high score guys love it. For that reason. So you get the idea. Cool game. Mega cool. So I didn't do a lot to this game. It's painted black. <laughs> Someone painted the sides black. And you know... This is one that I actually would like to restore. Um, I'd love to get the Atari System 1 artwork or whatever that, no, it's not System 1. Uh, the artwork that goes on the side here is generic Atari artwork that was, is for Paperboy, but I'd love to get that artwork and put it on here um, and just go through the game and restore it proper um, because someone just spray painted the whole thing black and it's not really great. You can't really tell down here, but I think it'd be a fun one to restore and definitely worth uh, worthy of it, don't you think? Great game. All right, the next game here is Crazy Climber. Now, this is one that I've been looking for forever, and we got this year, okay? Um, and I wanted this version. I wanted the Nichi Butsu version, either the regular or the deluxe, because there's also the Taito version that's in a generic Taito cabinet, okay? So this is kind of like the Japanese version of Crazy Climber. Now, Crazy Climber is a game I remember playing as a kid. I remember playing it at, like, Showbiz Pizza or something. Um, and it was a pretty elite game to me. This game came out before Donkey Kong, and you would think uh, that they ripped off Donkey Kong. I think it's the other way around, man. We got we got a monkey on a construction site. So uh, there's stuff in this game that's very reminiscent of Donkey Kong. So this game popped up on Facebook. Uh, a guy in Ohio was selling it, and I snatched it up and shipped it here. Um, and it was working. Um, it had some graphical glitches that I fixed. Uh, it was low power supply, uh, low voltage on the power supply. The control panel had a black sticker over it, and I removed that. And we are left with this mess, which doesn't look great. Um, I eventually am going to vectorize this artwork and do something about this. But I'm not going to mess this up until I have a really good plan, because this is a very rare game. And just the fact that I ha even have some of the artwork on the control panel I I is, is okay with me. So eventually I plan on scanning this and vectorizing it. I talked to Richard Dissel Game and, and he said that he could make the screens for me and I could re-screen screen print this. So I don't know, we'll see what happens. It's, it's kind of a low priority right now. Um, I'm kind of calling it okay for now. It's better than, what, than it, how it was when I got it because it just had that piece of black vinyl covering the original art and I didn't know what was underneath it. I was hoping the original art would be there and, and sure enough it was. But what happened was is that someone s replaced the joysticks. These are not the original joysticks. And actually when I got it, it had bat joysticks and then I replaced it with these Japanese uh, micro switches. But the original joysticks, they bolted from underneath and didn't have holes in the top. So I think that someone drilled holes in here, installed new joysticks and then put like a piece of black vinyl over it. So I did all of that and then got some Japanese micro switch joysticks that are closer to the original. They're not exact, but they're in the ballpark. And also when I got this game, uh, someone put EL wire all around it, which was kind of weird. I think they did it though because um, the marquee on this does not light up. Because this is on like solid wood and it just doesn't light up. So someone didn't like that, so they put EL wire all around it to kind of make it brighten up a little bit. I don't know, it doesn't bother me. Anyway, this is the Nichibushu regular version. They also have a cabaret version, they have a cocktail version, they have a deluxe version. And then there's the Taito regular version, the Taito cocktail. There's like eight different versions of Crazy Climber. <laughs> so um, this is a pretty cool one, I think. I, I, I like the cabinet. I think it's kind of good looking and it's got that original kind of finish. Um, a lot of stuff about this reminds me of Nintendo cabinets, you know, the coin doors and the mechs and the type of materials they were using. I just think it's very reminiscent of Nintendo. Alright. Okay, I do have a high score kit. I never put it in here. Oh, because it turned out that this game actually had um, a unique ROM version with different music that we discovered. 
So the controls are left and right, you know, to move his arms. Um, sounds easier than it actually is. It's actually kind of really clumsy, the controls. And you, you kind of got to figure out, like, the flow of it. And you kind of lock in. But the controls are really goofy in this game. But once you get it, it starts feeling a little bit more natural. And you're trying to get to the top. The bird's pooping. Don't poop on me. Okay, good. All right. Oh, he's coming back with more poop. All right, hang on. Nope. Okay. All right. This guy's throwing plants. Jesus! All right. Ah, enough already! <laughs> so there's a little progress meter on the left here, so we're about three quarters of the way. Here's the big monkey. I mean, I suppose everybody ripped off Donkey Kong. I mean, King Kong. Would oh, he got me. That monkey looks so bizarre in this game. There, I hear the helicopter. Help! <laughs> so that's the game, and then it's rinse and repeat. It gets harder and harder and harder. I never passed this one. And just, as soon as it starts, they're throwing garbage at you. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's Crazy Climber. Um, I actually have a high score kit for that. I gotta find that. I got so much things, so many little things I have to do. Um, I didn't. Want, I I bought the high score kit, and I wasn't gonna put it in because um because I didn't want to ruin the ROM version I had because I have a, a rare ROM version that was never in MAME, and I actually dumped it and sent it to the MAME guys, and it's now in MAME. Um, but anyway, the High Score Kit guys actually added my ROM version to it, and I just have to burn the ROM. And I, I'll get around to it eventually, because I think it'd be cool to have the High Score Save Kit in here that also uploads to the internet. I've got Ethernet I can run over here, so we'll do that some someday. But that is Nichibutsu's Crazy Climber. I don't know, I just think it's a cool cabinet. All right, the next game here is Journey. Uh, what, what can we say about this? <laughs> I will forever be tied to this game. Um, this was an epic restore series. Uh, one of the, my, the first big ambitious projects I ever took on on this channel, I, I think it was Journey. Uh, it was a crazy project, I took it on. Um, basically, I went down to an auction in Connecticut and I picked up this cabinet. It was converted to a golf game if I remember correctly. And um, so it was painted. No, was it painted black? Yeah, it was. It was painted black in the front for sure. Um, and, and it was missing everything. It, I, nothing. Everything was gone. The PCB was gone. The cassette player board was gone. The artwork was gone. Everything was gone. It was a black golf game. That's it. There was nothing. So I picked up this the empty cabinet. And by the way, I love Journey, okay? I, the band Journey, I actually genuinely like them, okay? So I picked up the cabinet, and then I, then I basically started acquiring all the parts, okay? I got the PCB, I got the reproduction artwork, um, I found a Tron harness that we used, and, and, and I converted it to a Journey harness. 
because Tron and Journey, you know, are both MCR games. Um, I got a reproduction control panel. I found the original joysticks and whatever. I, I got all the parts. And I got I got the cassette board. Um, this has a cassette player in it, and we basically just put the whole thing back together, and it was a massive undertaking. Um, and I love the game. All right, let's play the game. <laughs> A lot of people don't like the game, but I don't care. I like it. <laughs> so basically, and basically, we went to we went to war with this game too. Um, the monitor. Oh no! Why is the joystick not going left? Hang on. There we go. Drums. We gotta either turn them all blue or get rid of them. I'm not going left. Man. There's something with that switch. Leaf switch is dirty. So now we're Steve Perry. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Doing pretty well not being able to go left. <laughs> Let's see. My God! <laughs> I kind of want to pass every level so I can show you guys the cassette player playing separate ways. And by the way, this game was kind of a big deal because they digitized the band's faces. You see that? I have a little black and white image of them. <laughs> and I guess the technology came from an idea they had to use a camera to capture. Um, people's faces as they were playing the game and I guess they put it on test and people were like, you know, mooning it or whatever. Now Ross Valerie. I just love all these Valley Midway MCR games. I'm just, I'm really a big fan of them and I've got quite a bit of them down here. You know, we've got Tapper, Tron, this, Two Tigers. I used to have Domino Man. I kind of wish I had Domino Man still. Steve Perry here. Shit, 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 shit. No, darn it. <laughs> ah. Well, anyway, you get the idea. <laughs> it's a cool game. I put a lot of time and effort into this game, guys. <laughs> it turned out really good, though. This right here, I painted it, but I wet sanded it with, with like 2000 grit. It feels like it's laminate. It's the best paint job I've ever done in my life. Like, I like legit sanded this till it was like buttery smooth. And it was so much work. Oh my God. But this is a really great finish. Just perfect. And then this is the reproduction artwork that uh, Richard Thistle game printed. He did a really good job. He reverse printed the marquee on glass. It looks just mint. Awesome game. All right, the next game is another Bally MCR uh, game by Midway MCR. It's Tron. Of course, this is based on the Disney movie of the same name. Um, Tron is probably one of the greatest arcade cabinet designs ever, period, the end. Um, it's just the best cabinet design ever. It's, it's so badass. And 
I love the game. I think some people don't like the game as much as I do, <laughs> but I love Tron. Like, I have vivid, vivid, vivid memories of, of loving this game and playing this game as a kid, being a little confused by the movie, but ultimately liking it later in life, you know, but Tron was just so awesome. And this is one of the earlier games I got. I didn't do too much to this game. It's all original. I, I intended to do a restore on this at some point in my life. I actually have all new artwork for this, and I never put it on. Um, I was going to restore this game, and I never did. So this is all original. Um, I think I just rebuilt the control panel and replaced the flight stick, and, and, and might have uh, I might have rebuilt the monitor, too. I don't remember, but really, it's all original. I didn't do nothing to it. So let's check it out. And, and this thing is um, cool, though, because it has, like, black light effects. And right now I have a, a ballast. I have a problem with this fixture in here. Um, one of the ends is, is bad. I actually ordered new ones, and, and they're in there. I never put it on, but we got to fix that lower uh, uh, light fixture. But it has two black lights, one at the control panel and then one below. And you can see, like, on the two tigers where the one below is, you know, it's, it's down there where it lights up right there. See that? So anyway, I gotta fix that one on this. It's been on the list forever. Anyway, let's kinda come in here and, and see if we could film this and play it. I love this game so much. So, right now in the beginning, we don't know what we're gonna get. There's four different levels to choose from, so we'll just go up and see what happens. So this is the spider one. And so this one has a spinner and a flight stick. And basically we want to get inside the circle. And you can, you can kind of linger here though so you get extra points. This is kind of part of the point pressing strategy. But we just have to get into the circle before the timer gets to zero. Okay. Then you can kind of do this on the way out. <laughs> but you can see the controls here. We have a spinner and then this flight stick. And again, and this is another one of those games that's just hard to play in MAME. Alright, so this is the light cycles. These are all scenes from the movie. Alright, let's go over here. The first rounds of these levels, it's not very challenging, and then it starts getting really hard. <laughs> like, by the time you get to the third or fourth round, it's it gets very, very challenging. Especially with this little MCP coin. But I just love the sounds. I just, I consider this just one of the best video games ever made. Arcade video games. And I used to have Discs of Tron 2. I didn't like that game as much as this. I, I think this is the better game. Um, Discs of Tron probably had the better cabinet of the two, especially the environmental one. But I just like this game better. This is more... It's just more fun to play. It's just more variety, too, because Discs of Tron is the same, same thing over and over again. I mean, this is two, but... <laughs> This is Tron, it's just like one level that you keep playing. I hate this MCP coin. So you can see now we're on the second round. This kills your finger. So if you get a bonus if you destroy all these, I mean I could escape any time right now, but I'm just kind of lingering to get the points. It's killing my wrist. I'm in trouble. <laughs> so, anyway, you get it. That's Tron. Awesome, awesome Valley Midway game. Alright, next one here is Gottlieb's Qbert. Uh, Qbert, another, you know, iconic cult game up there with Frogger and Pac-Man and all that good stuff, if you ask me. Um, this one I found on Craigslist. Uh, it was broken when I got it. Um, I took it home and the only problem was the interlock switch. That's in, that was inside the coin door here. Um, this was just pushed and the thing was off. <laughs> so, so I brought it to the garage, took it out of my car, I just pulled the interlock switch out and the game just 
turned right on. I did end up having a lot of trouble with this game though, and, and I, I eventually figured out the problem. It was the transformer, which is that was this is the only time I ever had a bad transformer in a game. This game was resetting and rebooting and restarting all the time and freaking out. Um, I tried, you know, changing power supplies and was it a board issue? Power I was guessing and trying all kinds of stuff and then one day I decided to to change the transformer and it fixed it one million percent and it hasn't been a problem since. Um, so but this game was a real pain in my butt for a year or so until I figured it out. It's been reliable since. Um, it's all original hardware. They, they do have a J-Rock board, but, I, you know, this is all original. And the uh, only thing I did to it was I, I got uh, new side art for it because it was missing when I got it. It was just completely missing. So this is reproduction side art. I did get the swearing marquee. This was like the marquee that they used as kind of like the prototype uh, before they knew it was called Qbert. Um, and then you can see down here. So the original marquee had like Qbert up here. And this one has the swearing. I, I, I kind of like the swearing better. But the control panel overlay, I believe, is original. I never replaced it. It sure looks like it is to me. The, the bezel's original, all that stuff. So let's give it a sh shot here. And what's cool about this game, too, is, you know, Gottlieb was a pinball company. And so inside the game is a knocker, like a pinball knocker. And so when you knock things off the level or if Qbert falls to the bottom, pinball knocker fires like listen you hear that hitting the side of the cabinet you know so it sounds like something actually hit the floor of the cabinet it's kind of cute but if you haven't figured it out you got to get all of the squares to be the color it shows and right now we just, just have to step on the squares one time in the later levels you got to jump on everything twice and then sometimes if you jump on them again, it'll change back to another color. It just starts getting more challenging and more hard. But I, I just love this game. I used to play this game quite a bit on my Atari 2600. Remember Parker Brothers made like the Qbert cartridge? <laughs> they did like Frogger, um, Qbert, I don't remember what else. Empire Strikes Back. So, you get it. That's Star Wars. Everyone knows Star Wars. I mean, uh, Star Wars. That's Qbert. <laughs> Everyone knows Qbert. <laughs> Mine's a really nice looking Qbert, by the way, for all original. It's got even a tax stamp on the side here that I never touched. This is from the South Carolina Tax Commission. Class 2 coin operated device, 84 and 85. Expires June 30th, 1985. Isn't that cool? So I thought about taking that off, and I said, nah, I think we should leave that. That's part of the history. All right, the next game here is Bally Midway Tapper. Awesome game. Definitely one of the cooler cabinets. This is another MCR class game. And by the way, MCR is like Midway Card something, something, card reader? I don't know. It's it's the hardware class. Um, and this is, this is the same as Tron and Journey and... Um, I, two tigers and 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 they used to have Distratron and uh domino man and all that um and, and actually this little character is the same dude that's in domino man and also timber but anyway tapper is a great bar theme game this is the budweiser version they also have a root beer version that's a little more family friendly you know this was intended to go into a bar you know it's got the budweiser theme and all that and I, I think this is the one to get the root beer one i think is is rarer but the Budweiser was by Budweiser one is cooler. Um, they did have two versions of this cabinet. One had full color on the sides, and whereas this is more of a just a monotone kind of brown and beige-ish color, like almost like a sepia. Um, I didn't do much to this game. Uh, I pretty much bought it as is, as you see it right here. I did have some trouble with the power supply. Uh, I rebuilt that. Um, that's about it. Uh, oh, uh, the monitor too. Uh, there's a brand new. I put a brand new monitor in there. I think that's a um, Hap Vision Pro. It's in there. I don't remember. But anyway, let's play the game. It's definitely a, another one of those games that you can't play in Mame. And, and by the way, check this out. It's got brass like drink holders here and like a brass footrest on the bottom. So they really went all out to kind of make this feel like a bar. And the controls, by the way, are this joystick, four-way joystick, and then these Budweiser taps to serve the drinks. So, just super cool game. So, the first level is like this old West bar. And then you can kind of point press here, too. 
You're basically trying to get the patrons out of the bar. And once they're all gone, the level's over. But see, that guy dropped a tip. So then the girls come out and dance. And now that guy's not paying attention, so if I served a drink, it would, it would go on the floor. Alright, so let's get out of here. Alright, so we cleared the level by getting all of the patrons out of the bar. So this is the bonus level. So the guy's gonna shake all the cans, and we gotta find the can he didn't shake, which is that one. He's gonna mix them up. And then we get a bonus if we correctly open the can he didn't shake, and if we're wrong, it'll spray in our face. So that's that's uh, that's Tapper, you know. Now the next level is a football field, and then you go to outer space, there's a punk rock bar. Great game. My wife actually loves this game. She's really good at it. So, all right, let's move on. All right, next game over here is the Mega Touch Force 2010. This is a Radeon, I think. This is actually the last CRT model um, that Mega Touch made before they switched over to LCD uh, display technology. Um, anyway, I got this game because this is another one of those games that my wife and I used to play in the bar a lot. Um, we played this, we, again, we played Golden Tee, we played darts. That was pretty much it for, for, the, for the 90s, uh, for us, for gaming in the late 90s. Um, we loved this frickin' Mega Touch. This was so fun, doing like Wheel of Fortune type games and trivia at the bar. Just a really cool system. So I bought this on eBay, and um, really good seller, actually. It was a great experience. Um, when I got it, it had like, I don't remember which version it was, but I upgraded it to the version that's in here now, which I think it's 2010 and a half, I don't remember, but it's like a security dongle on a hard drive I had to replace. Um, but really cool system. Like, I just, I just really like it. This is, yeah, this is 2010 and a half. Um, so we got card games, which I like. Um, I like Tri Towers is pretty good. Wait, go back to cards, try towers, one player. These are just fun games, and you know, I have the TV above here, and that's no coincidence, because my wife would come down here and, and just play this, and, um, and zone out with a beer and watch TV. It's a lot of fun. Six, five, five, ten, nine, ten, jack. Jack. <laughs> Two, three, four, three. But yeah, it's a cool game. You guys get the idea. Um, just lots of card and like trivia type games. Um, there's adult games on here too. We have those turned off. I think there's like nudie girl strip poker type games. There's some action games too that are kind of funny. What was this? Wait, what's... What's Monkey Bash? Oh. <laughs> Actually, I, I was addicted to this game on the iPhone. I remember I had this. <laughs> it's a stupid game. <laughs> I mean, they are basically like iPhone type games, but, you know, iPhone basically killed this company, you know, because, um,. All these kind of apps and games were on, they all came out on the iPhone. And before the iPhone existed though, we had to sit at the bar with this thing to play these types of games. I don't know, it's a fun, it's a fun system. There's tons of games on it. I, I, I still really like the system though. All right, let's go. Uh, Neo Geo is next. So Neo Geo, I love Neo Geo. I used to play Neo Geo in a bowling alley in Hoffman Estates, Illinois, that I guess just recently closed. Um, and uh, I just really remember this system uh, in the early 90s, I guess would be when I was playing it. And 
the one game I really remember was that Nam 1975 game. I don't know, I just loved that game. <laughs> And I should probably get that cartridge. Um, I do have it on the multi-cart. But anyway, this is the fourth slot. This is the, the big red one. I personally think this is the one to get. Um, and you can see it's got four slots up here. I picked this up in an op from an operator. Uh, Adam, and, Adam and I did an, a warehouse raid a long time ago. And I, I grabbed this, the dartboard that's in the garage, um, a Dragon Spirit, a Jukebox, I think that's all I got, and then Adam got six player X-Men and a bunch of random stuff. I don't know, There's I put posted pictures a long time ago of this raid, and it, it was quite the raid actually. And this game actually wasn't for sale um, because he was still operating the Neo Geos. He was trying to get rid of the older stuff, um, and I convinced the guy to sell this to me. And I'm glad I did because it's a really good one. And I haven't done much of this at all. It was in great shape. All this guy's stuff was in, in great shape. The monitor did die at some point and I rebuilt it. Um, I, you know, I cleaned the slots, you know. This is a cartridge-based system if you're not aware. Um, it uses cartridges. And right now I have in here King of Fighters 98, Nightmare in the Dark, Bust a Move Again, and Neo Mr. Do. And uh, we'll just kind of check it out. So you switch games with this right here. So this is Mr. Do. Wait, is there no sound? Huh. Remember we had trouble with this game with no sound? And I cleaned the cartridge slot and it fixed it? <laughs> it's funny, you know, doing this uh, lengthy in-depth review <laughs> really makes me play every single game, which I don't do every weekend. I just don't have enough time in my life to ever do this. Um, and it's funny how we're finding these little flaws, you know, stuff that's just kind of hanging out. You know, I haven't played Journey in months, and that thing had an issue. So I'm wondering if I power cycle this and we reseat the cartridge. So Mr. Dew is the last one. We'll get sound again. So I, you can see here, cartridges are down there. Let's see. There, sounds back. Dirty cartridge slot. Hey man, this stuff's old. <laughs> stuff happens, and if you don't play this stuff every day, you don't catch all of it. You don't know what's waiting for you the next time you play it. All right. I, I actually really like this stupid game. This is, a, I think, a bootleg cartridge that I bought on eBay. I didn't know if it was going to be bootleg or not. I think it is. Yay, we cleared it. There's so many good games on the Neo Geo. Obviously, you know, the Metal Gears. Those games don't have a lot of replay value for me, personally. I've got a couple, oops, I just died. A couple uh, Metal Gear cartridges somewhere. Wait, what's that thing? Extra. So now we gotta get these dudes.
Wait. Oh, there's one more. Darn it. Okay. Let's see if we can spell extra. I think there's like a cool like little bonus round. We need to get E and X. Wait, who's, what's this monster, dude? Oh, I touched him. Don't do that. <laughs> so I got power-ups now. Wait, I'm a girl now. I don't know what's happening. Turn it. All right, let's get the E. Yes. Did I get the E? I spelled extra. There. This is the forward to the gold winner prize. Go. So it's like a it's like a little puzzle. Wait, oh no. Hmm. I think I'm stuck. Here. Yes, I did it. I did it. Ah, oh. <laughs> I did it. Ah, oh. anyway, that's it. It's Mr. Do. You get it. <laughs> so yeah, that's a Neo Geo Four slot. Cool, cool cabinet. I like it a lot. All right, next game, another favorite of mine, Valley Midway Burger Time. This is a game I definitely remember playing quite a bit, like a lot, okay? And um, this is an all original cabinet. Um, I didn't do anything to the cabinet, but I did replace all of the removable artwork pieces. Uh, this is a new control panel overlay. It's a new bezel, it's a new marquee, all silk screened, all looks really great. Um, I rebuilt the monitor, the front, I never did anything to it. The coin door really needs to be restored. But it's a mostly original cabinet. It's not a really great burger time, but it's presentable and it plays awesome. Um, again, this is another one of those games where the makers are trying to create mascots. You know, we had Zeke over there. This is featuring Peter Pepper. <laughs> so, so a lot of these companies definitely um, were trying to just create their own Mario, their own Pac-Man, their own whatever. And Peter Pepper is one that didn't really stick around. I did. Did he kind of show up in Wreck-It Ralph though? Um, but basically, we're we're making burgers here. You gotta drop all of the the parts down, the buns, the the lettuce. You're being chased by hot dogs and eggs. <laughs> I remember hearing that this game had egg in it because in Japan it was fairly normal and standard to put egg on hamburgers. Doesn't explain the hot dogs though, because did, did they put hot dogs on the hamburgers? <laughs> and we have pepper as a defense, like that. But you really want to just get the guys all to kind of get on the same bun with you. Not like that though. You want to just drop them all down on a bun. And you can eventually learn how to group them all together. 
and get them to kind of just really follow you around. So like right here, I got two guys to go down and then took one down on the way and then usually a new pepper will show up right there. Let's just clear this level. But, I mean, that's basically the game. And then it gets harder and harder and harder and harder. But really the key to it, though, is to figure out how to control the guys and get them to follow you and get them all to pile up onto one bun and send them all down from the top to get mega points. But it's a really fun game. All right, so that's Burger Time. Truly a great game. I like it so much. I, I really do. <laughs> and my wife plays this game quite a bit, too. All right, moving on. 720. Another one of those games that just screams me. It's skateboarding, but in a video game format. And this game really pairs well with that radical pin over there, wouldn't you agree? So this is a tremendous Atari game. Came out in like 83 or so. Really sick cabinet. You know, we got a boom box on the top. It's got a 25 inch medium res monitor. Um, like down here, the control panel is sick with the black and white color scheme. It's got this 360 degree, really unique joystick. You know, another game that, you know, can't really play in MAME. Um, I picked up this game from Jay in a trade. Um, I didn't do a lot to it. I just kind of fixed some of the, the, the stuff that was driving me batty. Like the, uh, the boom box was all messed up. Like someone took it apart and put it together wrong and had a really crappy overlay on it. So I got a really good overlay that makes the 720 part glow there. Um, but other than that, I didn't do tons to it. I just fixed the stuff that was really wrong. Um, and someone did restore this not very well but someone did take a shot at it. I did uh, get a new overlay for the control panel. The thing about this game, and it is a skateboarding themed game, is that I'm really bad at it. <laughs> like, like, I don't know what it is, and I, I, I say this in every one of these year-end videos, but I cannot get good at this game. So, you're supposed to go around, get these tickets, go to all the parks, get scores, you know, collect money, do lots of jumps and stuff. It's got a killer soundtrack. You know, there's all kinds of secrets and hidden areas and or just hidden things on the map. Hey, good choice, kid. You're gonna love it. So I just got a new skateboard. You can upgrade your board at the shops. But you gotta learn the map. You gotta know where to go. Like, okay, so we'll do the downhill course here. So we gotta get a medal. All right, come on, get up. All right. All right, we got a silver award. So this game, oh, also, the tube in here was from a TV. Um, the old tube went bad. We did a tube swap on Matt Osborne at one of my Christmas parties a long time ago. We didn't get the conversions quite right, but it's like 99%. I can see the blues off a little bit on the bottom. Tear them off, kid. All right, it's got a helmet. So as you get all that stuff, it kind of upgrades your skater. Let's go to the ramp over here. And you're supposed to like just keep doing like that jump to get points. So I've got two park tickets. Let's see what the map looks like. So I'm here. Let's go to the ramp park down here. I know. Now the bees are coming. All right. All right. Three thousand or better. I'm so hold jump button for more tricks. Metal. <laughs> All 
Alright. So we got a park ticket. So let's go to, oh the shoe shop's right here. Let's hit the shoe shop, then the slalom park. Shop should be right. Darn it, get off me. Come on, before the bees come. There you go. Have fun. Alright, and then the other park should be like right here. There's a slalom park. Are all the parks here? So we just need to jump. I need I need more points now. All right, so the jump is over here. So we got to go. All right. So we need enough points to get the next park ticket. I just got one. Alright, so we should go down here. And then I think over here. What do you think this is? A charity organization? Where's the jump? Yeah, it's down here. There it is. Alright, cool. Let's go do the jump. All right, I need 1,100 or better. All right. Darn it. No! I got the bronze. So we got class one and every all four ones. So now we're let's go to class two. This is like my best game ever. <laughs> so I don't have enough for a park ticket yet. See. Come back when you got a ticket. Twenty-five thousand points. Get it or die. Oh my god, I have eighteen thousand. Bees are gonna get me. So that's the game. <laughs> What do you guys think? I think that's my best game ever. Is there a leaderboard? Nope. There is, but I'm not on it. Overall score, 29,900. <laughs> so, I was kind of close. Alright, let's move on. What do you guys think? 720. Awesome game. All right, let's move on. The next one here is the Nintendo versus Dual System, AKA the Red Tent. This is the sit-down version. Now, the Nintendo versus System came in a couple flavors, okay? This is the, the sit-down Dual System, okay? And they also had the upright unit system and the upright Dual System. And they call this one the Dual System because it's got two monitors, okay, there's actually one PCB game board in here, but there's two monitors, okay, and right now I have Dr. Mario and Super Mario, but some of the games you could actually play head-to-head, -head, you know, like baseball, you could have one person on this side playing against the other person on the other side head-to-head, -head. Balloon Fight plays like that, Tennis, there's a bunch of games like that where you can have one game head-to-head, -head, 
or you could put in two separate games on the PCB. So like, again, right now, Super Mario on this side and Dr. Mario on this side. Now, the Super Mario version that's on here is my favorite version of Super Mario Brothers. Um, and actually, they just released this version on the Switch. It's funny, Nintendo on the Switch has been re-releasing their arcade games. And really, they've ignored those forever, you know? Like, they never released the arcade version of Mario Brothers, which they just did on the Switch, okay? They never released the arcade version of Super Mario, which is called Versus Super Mario Brothers, until now, and on the Switch. And I, I hope to God that they released Donkey Kong and Junior and all those games, but there's always been a rumor that they don't actually own the code for Donkey Kong. I don't know, we'll see. Anyway, this cabinet is super cool and really started a lot of things for me in this hobby because this is the system that really got me tinkering with this stuff, okay? Because I figured out that you could take these boards and burn ROMs and convert games to other games and it really got me interested in the hobby even more so than when I just only had the Donkey Kong. And here, I'll kind of show you guys what one of the boards look like so you, so you kind of know what I'm talking about. Um, so this is the, the PCB for the game. There's only one board in here for both sides, okay? And this board is actually two in one. So this is one side, this is the other side. So right now, like on this one here, this is Ice Climber on this side and Excite Bike on this side, okay? So if I were to put this board in here, we'd have Excite Bike on one side and Ice Climber on the other. You can see here though, I burned some ROMs because I actually converted Super Mario into Ice Climber because I had more than one Super Mario. So. And then I documented all this. This chip here is called a PPU. It's like a security chip. And this PPU, this particular one, which is um, RP2CO4004, only works with a few games. But it's, it wasn't documented until I documented it at my website, johnsarcade.com. You can also go to nintendoversus.com, vs.com. But anyway, I figured out that you could take Super Mario and you, it was compatible with Ice Climber. So if I burned some ROMs, put them in here, it would work. And um, if you had the wrong PPU in, the game might not boot or you'd have wrong colors. And then we have Excite button over here. But anyway, this is what the board looks like. And then if we had two sets of um, like baseball in here, then we could play head-to-head -head baseball. If we had two sets of uh, a tennis on either side, you could play head-to-head -head tennis. Balloon fight, same thing, or you could put separate games in there. Really awesome system. Really, really kickstarted me into this hobby though. Like, like when I started tinkering with this stuff, figuring it out, removing chips, burning ROMs, it started giving me a lot of confidence in the hobby, okay? Because I was handling these boards all the time, I was manhandling stuff, and it, it kind of really got me over the fear of, of working on this stuff, even way more than Donkey Kong, I think. Like, Donkey Kong was an interesting exercise, because I was kind of thrown into that, but this was like just fun and experimental and magical. And it really got me, it just, it took a lot of the mystique away from touching this stuff, especially handling the ROM chips and the sockets and removing chips and all that. So anyway, we'll just play this for a couple seconds. Um, and, and again, I, I want to reiterate too that this is not the same version that's on the NES. And that's why I like this system so much. Because Nintendo also had a, something called a Play Choice 10, which I used to have. That's nothing more than NES on a timer, and that is boring. I had the Play Choice 10 down here, the nice dedicated single monitor one. I really liked it, it was a handsome game, but at the end of the day, I don't want to stand up down here playing Metroid or, or Zelda. It just doesn't interest me. The games that are in this system just work better. Like Super Mario Bros. is another one of those long form games, but it's different enough than the any from the NES version that you want to play they actually made it harder um, Dr. Mario on the other side is kind of close to the NES one but some of the games like Balloon Fight is totally different than the NES Wrecking Crew is totally different than the NES Excite Bike is not the same so that's why this system is really cool is that the versions in here are unique alright so here we go but this is this is <laughs> This is um, indeed Super Mario Bros. But it gets it gets really harder. You won't see the differences till a little bit later in the game, and I don't know if we're gonna get there. I just missed that question block. Oh, there's like a difference right here. Cause that's oh that is a one-up. 
That's the same as the NES. It's funny though, like the last like five, six, seven, eight, nine years, I haven't really played the NES version, only this version. I don't think I, I've yet to finish this version, by the way. I fall apart somewhere around six. Oh, and the warps are totally different too. Let's just kind of blast through the to get to the warps. On your mark. Let's just blast through this. And I'll show you guys that the warps are different at the end. Oh my god. There's so many great games on the on the uh, Red Tent, uh, the Versus system, but my favorite is this one. I just love this game. I mean, you want to talk about magic. This game was such an important part of my gaming history. <laughs> When I was 15, I got my first end. I got my NES. Oh my god, my life was changed because of this game. All right, so right there, that's different. So you can screw it up, and then you get to the pipes. And those are the same warps, aren't they? I think it's at the end of four that you don't get the good warp. I hate this level, and I hate that guy. It was 4-2 was the other warp, right? I always hated that 4-1 level. When I was younger, I would not try to blast through that. I tried to get rid of him every time he showed up by going to the top and jumping on him. Ah, oh, jeez. I remember when I first did that. Ah, I blew it. Damn it, I blew the warp. Ah. Anyway, you get the idea. <laughs> it's Super Mario. That's kind of fun there. <laughs> That would be a fun John's Quest for series, by the way. Me trying to get to the end of that game. Because <laughs> I have yet to finish uh, the Versus version. All right, so the game on this side here is Dr. Mario. Um, it's pretty much, I think, the same as the NES version. I I'm not really sure. I am not good at this game, though, like at all. I'm really, really bad at this game. So I'll just kind of show you the gist of it, though. It's got great music, though. So you have all these little viruses, you need to get rid of them. And if you get four of the same color in a row, it gets rid of the virus. And you can see that they drop down. But it's a Tetris-style game. And I just I used to play it a lot on the NES. Actually, when my wife and I were dating. Was that the Super Nintendo we played it on? Um, 
I think we had a version of the Super Nintendo. But I'm not really good at this. My wife is very good at this game. I don't have the patience for it. But you get the idea. <laughs> Four in a row, get rid of the viruses. So, all right, let's move on over here. And, and, and uh, by the way, the red tent, amazing system. I, I did pick this up a long time ago on Craigslist. It was one of the early games I got. Um, and I didn't do a lot to it. The mo Both monitors I had to rebuild. They both went out at some point. And this monitor really gave me a lot of trouble on this side. It took me forever to figure out what the problem was, and it was just uh, I had to reflow the traces. Um, on the board, I, I just pulled out the uh, the monitor chassis one day and refloated all the solder, and and bam, we fixed it. All right, let's move on here. All right, so the next two games are these two games. <laughs> so I guess we'll start with Mortal Kombat 2. So this is a cabinet that I picked up a couple years ago, and I'm in the middle of restoring it, and we're almost at the end. <laughs> so this is an ongoing project right now. Okay. And when we got it, it was painted black. We put on new side art, new control panel, all that stuff. It looks pretty sharp, okay? Um, so right now, I, I, I need to put on a new kick, a decal for right here, which I just got from Joe Sazebo. Um, we need to wire it up. I need to fix the monitor, and then we'll have us some Mortal Kombat in the basement. So I'm, I'm pretty jazzed. Right now, it's right here, but I, I don't want to keep these two games here, to be honest. I, I, I don't know. I'm kind of warming up to it. We'll see, but it really just kind of blocks off my little work area over there. I kind of rather would have these games, I think, on the other side of the basement. I'm not sure. What do you guys think? Do you like these two games here? I don't know. I'm not sure about it. So anyway, Mortal Kombat is a current project that's happening right now on the channel. I really hope I finish that by the end of February. <laughs> I'm just throwing it out there right now. I don't think we're going to finish it in January. We'll, we'll see. We got a lot of work to do still on that thing, believe it or not. All right, the next game here I picked up this year. And this is uh, a Belly Sente Sack Cabinet. It's, it's, um, it's kind of like the Nintendo Versus, um, where you have these little cartridges in there, and you could swap them out and change the game. So right now it has Sente Mini Golf in here, okay? And my intention is to convert it to a uh, Chicken Shift, which is kind of a rare, kind of really neat game. And basically what you do is you change the marquee, you change the control panel, you've got some screws here, this metal part pops out, and then you change the cartridge down there. And I think this is a really, really cool system. Um, and actually, Belly Senti is a company that Nolan Bushnell uh, founded after he left Atari, okay? And he was kind of doing this under the undercover here because he had kind of signed a non-compete. But Sente is another saying that comes from the game of Go, which is where the word Atari came from as well. So why don't we just give it a shot here and play the game? And, and yeah, I know there's kids on here. <laughs> I don't like it either. I, I guess someone did some research and both of those kids were found or something? I, I don't know. But I, I don't like that it's on that track screen. You keep looking at these kids that are missing. But I guess their, their story ended okay, as far as I know. I think someone on like Atari age forum or something looked into those kids to see where they went. All right, so anyway, let's look at the control panel. So we got a trackball, T-select, and then one to four players. So you can play up to four people with this game. But I didn't buy this cabinet again for this game, but I kind of am interested in this game. <laughs> and this game came out in 85, so this is pretty late, and the graphics and the sound are actually really good. So this has these loop-de-loops. If you time it right, uh, we didn't. We hit, we hit that thing and get launched. So it's mini golf. I don't know. I'd like to try this with a friend though. Oh my god. Oh, that's uphill. So that's on top of a little plateau. Okay, that 
that's impossible. <laughs> All right, screw that game. <laughs> so, so I didn't buy this cabinet for that game, but it's an interesting. I'm gonna par cycle it. It's an interesting game. I think the cabinet is totally useful though. Like I just like these kind of things where you you buy this cabinet. It's like the Neo Geo. You know, you start collecting the cartridges. Same with the Nintendo Versus stuff. You start collecting the PCBs. We're figuring them out. So I'm looking forward to getting all the little kits for this and just changing these games out. There's a game called Stalker. That's a cool driving game. Chicken Shift. I think Stalker and Chicken Shift are the two I really want. And I'll keep the mini golf kit. It's kind of something different to throw in there. But I don't know. All right, guys, that's the tour. We looked at every single game in this basement. All 30, was it seven games? That's a lot. <laughs> and also, this is a long video. I used an entire SD card, 64 gigs for this video, and then some. I'm right now on the second SD card in this video. So, so we're gonna stop right here. This is part number one. We're gonna call this part number one, okay? And then we'll come back in the next video with part number two. We'll resume the tour, okay? We'll check out my storage area over there with all my uh, game PCBs. We'll go upstairs into the in our little uh, sunroom, we call it, where I have my Pac-Man main cabinet and my cabaret. We'll go to the garage, I'll show you guys all the projects, then we'll come back downstairs here and we'll do some viewer mail, we'll hang out, we'll reminisce, we'll make some popcorn, we'll have some rum, some Pratt rum. You know, a viewer sent me this, whose name escapes me right now, and forgive me, he sent me this a few years ago. And this has become our end of year tradition here. And it's some very expensive rum. And I really want it to last like forever. We have this much left of it. I started drinking it like willy nilly um, a few years ago and I stopped myself. I was like, no, this is special. We got to save this. <laughs> so, so we can have a little taste here. Neat. Look at that, huh? Just to celebrate the end of part number one. <laughs> Let's see. So cheers, guys. It's been a great year. I want to thank all you guys for sticking with me and watching my videos and, and, and being just uh, just here. <laughs> that is good. That's some good stuff. <laughs> oh, man. That, that is so good. Like, I, I never really, like drink rum unless it was like in coke or something very good so anyway that's it that's the end of part number one of our year-end review we'll be back very soon with part number two and we're gonna make popcorn guys in the popcorn machine so anyway that's it i'll see you guys very soon uh be sure to check out my podcast video game outsiders at videogameoutsiders.com oh by the way i need to give away those those little mini arcade games um I'm going to do that in the next video. I will actually contact the winners uh, after this video, and then I will contact them before the next video, and then I'll announce their names, whatever. You'll get an email from me if you won. And uh, I will announce all those winners in the next video, at the end of part number two, the little mini arcade games. Um, I'll give you a chance to enter again if you want. If you don't know I'm talking about, the little basic fun arcade games, just send an email to john at johnsarcade.com. Just put mini space arcade in the subject line, and if you get it to me before the next video, I'll consider it as an entry. So, anyway, that's it. I'm done, guys. Be sure to check out my podcast, Video Game Outsiders, at videogameoutsiders.com. I'll see you all very soon. Later, and bye! Time, time.